I know this is secret, but if you hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit that notification bell too right there and hit all for God's sakes. Look at that. You hit subscribe, then the bell, then all. Then you get notified for every freaking video. Well, as long as your phone is set up correctly. Which I don't know how to tell you, so we'll just have to go with that. Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once. Share the video and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. Huh? There's, there's Bass B. You gotta get the hunt in there. And a, it's a house. Did you hear what I said? There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dead gum swamp. You know, that's just one step above stupid. Five brain cells, four aren't working. And that's about what I feel like right now. Five brain cells, four aren't working. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? So here's the thing. Uh, I made a video. Out of the three interviews, this one has the most bombshell information in it. And for some unknown reason, Hardly anybody saw the damn thing, all right? So here we go, I'm putting the link in the video right here. So if you ever, everybody could go grab it and share it somewhere right now. Here we go, there's the link right there. Grab that link and go share it somewhere. All right, thank you. Do I have faith that'll happen? No. And thank you, CaliGal3. Get us started for tonight. Had a really poor night on the Super Chat uh, front last night, but uh, you know, the ad revenue is doing well, but there's no skin in the game in the ad revenue. It's just my hard work making videos, doing things. I'm in Florida Gray. If you need me to give you, and the freaks, an inside look. Yeah, no, nah, that's all right. Let's see, that doesn't really give you an inside look at the case, just... <laughs> well, he's not, he's in, he's in uh, France right now, Keith. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm, I'm going to have a drink tonight, though. I just loaded myself up with a, a tequila sunrise, you know. I'm sort of like, been a stressful, like too much stuff going on for me. It's been interesting. I did talk to one of them. I was trying to get together a show tonight where multiple of the people, like three or four of the people that I've talked to call in and talk to with each other about stuff. I think that would be really interesting, but I never heard back from them uh, later in the evening. Like I, I, I was supposed to hear back and I never did, so I don't know. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm still thinking there's a possibility that the, that Jen isn't complicit with something, but it's getting harder, right? Because basically when you realize when she's being, when she's doing those interviews, when she's saying we dropped off and so forth, it's all something somebody told her, not something she knows. And it's a script. It's literally something that two people planned on saying because we know it's not true. You see? Hey, thanks, Kylie. What it do, Greg? I don't know what that means. My name is Gray, not Greg. Uh, but I, I respond to Greg, Gary, uh, Jerry, and Jim. 
okay? <laughs> oh, and Ray. Don't forget Ray. Yeah, don't forget that one. <laughs> yeah, I just said that, Ray. So what I thought we'd do tonight is let's listen to the the press conference, then read the arrest warrant again, and then there's a couple new documents that have, I don't know, I mean, Zozo sent me one, but I had one that sort of seemed similar. I don't know if it's part of the same one or whatever, but uh, <laughs> hey, thanks, Timothy Cecil. Thanks, Ray, for your hard work on the channel. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I have been working really hard. I, I have another interview that I did today, but now I'm sort of hesitant to even put it out there, given the fact that nobody's even... Hold on a second. Wow, you never get uh, that. So I bought these golf clubs a while back, two different hybrids not too long ago. And uh, the golf course actually just called me up and said, well, we have a low price guarantee, so we actually call you when the price drops and we give you a $40 gift card. <laughs> Man, that's, that's what you call customer service right there, okay? It's like, yeah, we lowered the price on those clubs, so we're giving you the discounted rate. And so here you go. Here's some a gift card for, you know, it's a gift card, of course, so it's really only getting back, you know, whatever the hell their markup is on the... That was pretty cool. But uh, anyways, yeah, so what I was saying was what we should do is play the press conference again and go over some of these the documents, and then listen to what they said. Hey, thanks, Lillian. All right. What do you guys think? I think that's a good way to do it. And that way, and I and I have a text document here, where you know it, we haven't. Uh, there's nothing on it currently. So what we'll do is we'll just add to it as we come up with time frames. Okay. So we'll start off with, uh, let's just play this, the little portion of that press conference where they give you timeline information. There might have been extra stuff in the question and answer, but I'm just going to use this portion right here. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near her school. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stefan Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. We have video evidence that shows Stefan Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 735 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school issued laptop from that dumpster. At 819, we have evidence that shows Stefan Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. Okay, hold on, hold on. Laptop from that dumpster. At 819, we have evidence that shows Stefan Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah. Okay, so right now we have this. So these are real things here, right? These are actual times that happened. 735, the backpack, 
and school issued laptop thrown in dumpster. I think it was in her own apartment, maybe. And then at 819, uh, Stefan, Stefan Stearns returns with Madeline visible in the vehicle dead. All right, so we have that now. And then let's take a look at some of these. Uh, first, we'll take a look at this document, the uh, arrest warrant, I guess. Hold on. <laughs> oh, shoot. I have to reopen this. Not sure what happened. Okay. Right here. The mother, on February 26, 2024, approximately uh, 2,000 hours, so that would be 8 o'clock at night. But let me tell you something before we even get to this. Let me tell you something that I got information from a friend of mine that, and this is stuff that uh, they're finding and forwarding it on to law enforcement is, well, hold on that, let's see, a phone of Steph, or not, of, of Jen's, was, or not Jen, Jesus, of um, Stefan, Stefan, I, I'm having a hard time switching it from uh, Stefan, which we've always called him back to Stefan. I don't know if you guys are having the same issue, but I am, <laughs> okay. But a phone that he was using let's see, was using an encrypted instant messaging site that has complex corporate structure of shell companies to delay complying with government subpoenas. You can also, uh, and then it says, I'll just say, uh, the service is a, a magnet for pedophiles, individuals who take pleasure from animal cruelty and other illegal activities, and then also allows users to exchange messages, share media and files, and hold private and group voice or video calls as well as public live streams. The app has been used for distribution of pornographic material, including CSAM material. All right, and so he was using that app on his phone at 4.49 a.m., 4.49, and five seconds a.m. on February 26th. How crazy is that? So that means like at you know, 4.49 in the morning, the same day that she goes missing, there it is. So this is something that this person found and has already forwarded it on. And I, I totally trust this person. They've been absolutely accurate on many, 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 many things. So you can just keep that you know I have no way to prove that so you can just put that in the back of your mind and maybe someday it'll come back and you'll say wow that was real all right so anyway say hey welcome there be killer so let's just go right here on February 26th the same day as that phone and app was being used 2024 at approximately 8 o'clock and it's going to be Madeline was reported missing by her mother. Uh, the mother advised her daughter, stepfather, Stephen Stearns picked up her uh, picked her up from home and dropped her off at Hunter Creek Middle School. And that's a 13400 Town Loop Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, on February 26, 2024. The mother then went to pick up Madeline from school at uh, dismissal and learned that Madeline never showed up to school. And this is all what she said in one of the interviews. An interview was conducted with, uh, let's see, with, I must say, Madeline Soto's stepfather, or something like that, with Madeline's stepfather, Stephen Stearns, who advised he picked Madeline up and dropped her off in front of Peace United Methodist Preschool at 13502 Town Loop Boulevard, Orlando, Florida, which uh, was down the street from the school at 8.40 a.m. Hey, thank you, Mag. 
Hunters Creek Middle School begins class at 9.30 a.m. A license plate reader captured uh, Stephan's vehicle with Florida tag uh, IYLL82 driving Madeline Soto something during the interview with Stefan he he provided uh, consent to search his phone however he stated he had accidentally uh, performed a factory reset on his phone on February 26th I mean what a joke if you want to look guilty as hell th th there's no way a jury would go well you know accidents happen you know you hadn't factory re reset your phone your entire life but you factory reset it on the night that, uh, I mean, come on, on the day that your stepdaughter goes missing, you call her, even though it's not really your stepdaughter, it's just your girlfriend's daughter that you, some for some reason, call her that. Uh, after an extensive canvas of the area and interviews with Madeline's family and friends, it was unusual for Madeline to be dropped off down the street from the school and not stay in communication with family and friends. So that's something we thought about early on. Like, wow, that's weird. That Why would you drop her off at that school when it's not even really close? Here, I'll show you just again on the map here. So here's the church over here. Is this where you would drop uh, somebody off to go to a uh, school over here? I mean, wouldn't you just, how about you drop her off right there even? I mean, or right here or but way over at this church, so she can just walk all the way over. It just doesn't make any sense. It was stupid. After an extensive canvas of the area and the interviews with... Okay, we already did that part. Upon reviewing the contents of uh, St uh, Stefan's phone, several images and videos were located which depicted... Madeline, you know, so now we're getting into, just to say there's a bunch of CSAM material with him actually performing sex acts with Madeline Soto. And then they go into this weird sort of porno description of his private parts. I, I don't really understand. I've never seen a, a professional document written like that. All right, then we're going to look at this right here. Uh, this, this was one, there was a video that, a channel had today and they had it on the screen the document and then they zoomed in but I froze the frame and did a screen capture so we could read the damn thing all right so it says on February 26 2023 at approximately 748 deputy Joseph uh, let's see responded to Village Park Drive Orlando Orange County Florida oh man okay I wish I so Village Park Drive is that let me see where that is. I never had her address, unfortunately. It's weird because she doesn't show up on... Let's see where that is. Village Park Drive. There we go. Oh, so it's just right here. Okay. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking it had to have been much closer. So apparently somewhere right around in this area... Does anybody have the first digits of that? I'm just asking, asking for a friend. Hold on. Trying to find, there's a document. Oh, shoot. This doesn't look like the one I have. Hold on. It's quiet. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Let me save this file for a second. Let's put it in there and then open this one up. Let's see if this is similar to that one. Yeah, okay, so this one's got a little bit less, uh, it's more, un I think it's unredacted a little bit. So there's a picture right there. 
and see how there's not as much of the all right there we go Township. Upon reviewing the contents of Stefan's phone, several images and videos were located which depicted him. Okay, so now we're missing that other page that we have on this one. So that goes down, and then there's an address. I wish. Does anybody have that? that those numbers of the street, the street numbers for Madeline's house, where she lived. I, I was weird because the only address I could find for her was 20 miles away on Ben Verified. Well, thanks, Cindy Lynn. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't on Ben Verified, unfortunately. You didn't. You didn't send it. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that's not what was in there. It doesn't say Santa Maria Drive. Yeah, it doesn't say that. Or maybe the the address is the school they went to. Let me see. After extensive canvas of the area and interview with her family. It was unusual for her to be dropped off there, yeah. It should be noted. Okay, we already have that. Oh yeah, I guess this is upside down, so this is at the bottom here. Middle school, 13400 Town Loop Boulevard. Okay, so we were actually just now looking at this document though. See? responded to Village Park Drive regarding a missing juvenile. While on the scene, the step-parent stated he dropped his daughter off at school, and when the mother went to the school, the daughter was not there. The parents searched with the neighborhood and placed where the daughter and places where the daughter may have gone, the parents could provide a location where the daughter, uh, let's see, may have been but yielded negative results when deputies checked the area. The juvenile was entered into the FCIC, NCIC, and EMER resource and missing disabled. Okay, I haven't got to that document yet. So we would get to that later. All right, so it says, uh, my investigation revealed the following. So this is uh, the narrative. When I arrived on the scene, I spoke with the mother, Jennifer Lissette Soto, who gave me verbal and sworn written testimony. Hey, thanks, Cheryl Bullock. On February 26, 2023, at approximately 8 o'clock in the morning, Jennifer observed Madeline Soto getting dressed for school. All right, so now let's put that in there. So we already know that's bullshit, okay? 8 o'clock. Madeline getting ready for school. Right there. Now, Stefan Stearns took Madeline to school, dropped her off near the intersection of Town Loop Boulevard and Hunter Park Lane at approximately 8.30, he says. So let's see, um, Town Loop and Hunter Park Lane, Hunter's Park Lane. So I wonder if that's right here. Okay, there's Town Loop Boulevard. Hamlet Boulevard and Hunt Wick Drive. So what did that say? Town Loop Boulevard and Hunter Parks Lane. Let's see where that is. Hunter's Park Lane. 
Okay, so this comes out right here. Okay, so right here, this is where they're claiming dropped off at 8.30. So we'll just put that after this. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Look how this is just so off already. 8.30, uh, let's see, Jen <coughs> says, and then Stefan says, Madeline was dropped off by the church. There you go. See? And you can already see this is garbage, right? I mean, at 819, he returns with Madeline visible in his vehicle dead. <laughs> so at 830, there was nobody dropping anybody off. And if you remember in the interview, the mom says that she got up at 9, her daughter. Alright. Make a school in an attempt to pick up Madeline at approximately let's see. Where were we at right here? Yeah, so he dropped her off near the intersection of Town Loop Boulevard and Hunters Park Lane at eight thirty AM. Jennifer went to Hunters Creek Middle School in an attempt to pick up Madeline at four o'clock when she discovered Madeline did not make it to school in an effort to find Madeline. Jennifer looked through the neighborhood near Madeline's school and went to her mother's business office located. Yeah, so that part does match the first interview that she did. Thanks, Allie Cake. Yeah, let's see if we can beat yesterday. Shouldn't be hard. Uh, let's see, Jen went to Madeline school to pick her up. Uh, but the school was closed, I think. All right, there we go. Got that. Yeah, we're just going through it, Ann, and uh, we're not we're not trying to jump forward or anything like that. We're just going through the whole thing. But yes, okay, you guys. So tonight's a new night. Last night we didn't get to the goal. So this night, if you guys are able to help support the Great Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, it allows me to keep doing the shows. And you'll see at the end of the month and throughout the month where we help various causes out of the income from the channel. I don't keep uh, anywhere near all the money uh, that I get on the channel I donate thousands of dollars every month to various charities and the only way to make that happen is if you guys are helping out on a nightly basis when I get ad revenue I feel like well man I kind of just did that myself you know what I mean so if you guys want to I mean I, I still donate part of the ad revenue money too that's the thing so you know to have some skin in the game please help support the channel that would be great thank you and also channel memberships are part of that Yeah, I'm not saying your address. I haven't seen your address yet, Zozo. I'm just going through this document. And when I get to the other document, it will be in that one. I later spoke with uh, Stephen Stearns, who stated in a verbal and sworn written statement the following. At approximately 8.25 to 8.40, Stephen dropped Madeline off approximately one block away from her school. Stephen watched Madeline leave his vehicle and walk toward the direction of her school. As Stefan was driving away, he could see what appeared to be Madeline searching through her book bag. He did not think anything of it due to Madeline usually looking through her bag to find headphones so she could put them in before going to school. Stefan began heading home when he attempted to stop for a vape juice at a nearby vape shop, but determined it was closed. Mm -hmm. uh, so Stephen went home to Kissimmee 
began heading home when he attempted to stop the vape juice at a nearby vape shop, but determined it was close. So Stefan went home to Kissimmee. Once Stefan was home for about an hour, he went back out to retrieve a vape juice and then run errands. You guys see how whenever I do my little spiel, it just doesn't do anything? So it's going to take you guys to help support the channel. I, you, you know, Somebody in there is going to have to say, hey, everybody. Doesn't matter what I say. Unbelievable. Uh, once Stefan was home for about an hour, he went back out to retrieve a vape juice and then run errands. After he was home for an hour, he went to get a vape juice. He returned home and stayed, stayed home at approximately 1430. Hmm. While on the scene, I had Deputy Diaz go to, let me see what he's saying. At approximately 825 to 840, he's saying he dropped her off. Let me get that one out. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah, thanks. Every bit helps. Thank you very much. 8.30 to 8.40 a.m. He said he, what does it say? Drop Madeline off at approximately one block away. Why does he say up here 8.30 though? Well, hey, you guys, thank you. There you go. We're making progress here. Thanks, Connie. My one flipping life. <laughs> that makes me laugh, just the name. Uh, Sophie H. And then also uh, Rhonda Brand. Thank you for all you do. And Kelly Gal 3. Thank you. Appreciate it. While on the scene, I had Deputy Diaz go to Los Palamas Vista Drive, the grandmother's home, due to the close proximity to both the school and... Okay, so here is the grandmother's interview here. Hold on. Okay, I got it. That's weird. That's actually Jen's mom. She seems so much younger. She looks younger than Jen. Levanta y coge hacia la escuela. Hasta ahí se sabe de ella. Y cada día que pasa es peor. Pierde uno mucho las esperanzas. Después de casi tres días de desaparecida. Okay, so anyways, what this says is I had my friend, um, forgot her name in here, so I won't say her name, but uh, this is what she says. My daughter worked late Sunday and woke up very tired, so she told him to pick her up. But where w wouldn't he be staying at the house? Where was he staying? I mean, he's in town. I mean, where was he staying then? The investigator asked if, he often gave rides, and she says no. Always her daughter. She says the church camera. And so what's weird about that, okay, so just looking at that, if it's almost never that guy, and this, so you got a picture right here. This grandmother is only repeating what Jennifer would have told her, okay? That's the thing. She would only be repeating what Jennifer told her. So what we're looking at here is she is saying that she had him pick up, you know, take uh, Madeline to school, but normally then she's adding in her own information about, well, he doesn't normally do that. After a few minutes, okay, and then it says, she says the church camera saw, let me keep reading, uh, I missed part of it, tired, so he told him to pick her up. The investigator asks if he often gave rides and she says no, always her daughter. She says the church camera saw the little girl wearing a green sweater sitting where she always gets picked up. After a few minutes, she gets picked up. And, or not picked up. So she doesn't, she was kind of, she wasn't sure what that part said when she was um, trying to decipher it. After a few minutes, she, she said it either picked up or walked away and that's what it was 
And that's the last my daughter knows of her. Hey, Lanky Tour, and thank you very much, Holly Miranda. Let's keep it going. Man, thanks, Holly Miranda. Hey, did you, uh, Lanky Tour, did you um, <laughs> say happy birthday to your buddy? <laughs> oh, man. Every day that passes, it's worse. One loses hope, especially after nearly three days of disappearance. We don't know what else to do. In my mind, it appears someone took her. Which is exactly the same thing that Jennifer says. Okay? So that's what was being referenced here, the grandmother. And so her story is sort of similar to Jennifer's story. And then here's the other document that uh, Zozo found. Apparently in this one it has, this is where the address is. So let's type that in. 4012 Santa Maria. 4012 Santa Maria Cry. That's really all that matters probably. And then there's an apartment number. So it's pretty close though. It's just right over here. But I didn't have this spot. So it's one of these in this building. In, let's hold on, right there, apartment. So thank you, Zozo, for the information. Just got to wait till we get to the, there it is. And let's see if we can, is there street view down there? I think this is probably what they're talking about. Now there's just a gated community, it looks like. But I wonder if it's in this complex where there's a camera filming him throw something in a dumpster. I mean, how stupid. This guy's like... Yeah, he's no, he's no uh, mastermind. Thank you, Far and QWU. <laughs> and Faye and LM. As in element open. Hold on. Got to get the music back out here. Yeah, by the way, do you guys, uh, what did you guys think of that interview today? Wasn't that wild? We'll talk about that later, too. But. I thought the title was appropriate. Hey, thanks, Mama She 13. Maybe he had an apartment in the uh, same complex. I don't know. No, he he was just up visiting. He lived in a different part of the the state. So let's read that one, the document we were just looking at. If I can find it again. After an extensive canvas of the area and interviews with the victim's family and friends, it was unusual for the victim to be dropped off down the street from the school and not say stay in communication with family and friends upon reviewing the contents well, i think this is actually the same document but not redacted so we've already read this it just has the address in here okay so it just goes through and describes csam material and really descriptive information about his johnson <laughs> i'm not sure where, where that came from there Thanks, k me and Arlene Nolte. And thanks, k me proud to be a freak. LM, Mama She 13, LM, Faye, Far Q, you know what that means. Billy Barker, Lanky Tor, Holly Miranda, Pancakes, Melanie became a freak up there. 
And then Callie Gal 3, Rhonda Brand, Sophie H, and Connie, my one flipping life in this recent barrage right here. Right, thank you guys, thank you. Yeah, it's weird. What's weird about the interview today, it was the best of the ones. I mean, it was more telling than any of the other ones. And it has one-fifth the views of the other two videos. Is that wild? I mean, you'd think that would have just been, oh my God, this is crazy. And people would be sharing it all over the place. But amazingly, somehow it didn't make it into whatever that is, the algorithm or whatever you want to call it. You know what's it? I think it must be uh, Zozo because how come the the guy giving that press conference believes that she's dead now? I mean, with that means they must have done something or found something that pointed right to that, or maybe the sight that they could see of her in the car was enough. I don't know. Thank you, Lee. How do you how do you pronounce that last name? Lee Reddy, is that right? Lee Reddy. <laughs> or R D. Lee R D. Wait a minute, that's not. <laughs> that sounds a little too much like somebody else I used to know. Did they have time to clean things up? All right. So there we go. That's basically, you know, a lot of the timeline information. And law enforcement just gave us some of it. So let's take a look at it. 735, a backpack and school-issued laptop were seen on camera. I'll put that in there. See, uh, laptop, laptop. Were seen thrown in dumpster on surveillance camera. I may well put it up here throwing backpack and school issued laptop in dumpster. There you go. When Stephen Stearns returns with Madeline, so at eight o'clock, Jen says Madeline's getting ready for school. Okay, that's that's an, that's inaccurate. Because at seven thirty-five, he's seen throwing her. Well, here's the thing. I guess she could still be in the house technically at this point. And then at 8 o'clock, Jen says Madeline's getting ready for school. You mean, like, getting her ready to put into the vehicle? And then Stephen, re uh, but he returns with Madeline, visible in the vehicle, dead at 8.19. Then Stephen says Madeline was dropped off at the church at 8.30, which doesn't make any sense. And then 4 o'clock, Jen went to Madeline's school to pick her up, but school was c closed at that point. So now we got this. Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off. Okay. So the we before, you know, the thing is, is before I, I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. Like when I'm, I'm on this channel, I go, man, we put out a video last week. And, you know, I'm just like we're all a big team, right? But I'm the one that's making the videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm making the videos and... So, but I, you know, I just say it because it's like, that's what I feel like. It's the freak family, right? So you say we, but given all these other discrepancies, uh, here's what you got to realize. What she's saying right now is a story that either they both concocted together or merely what she heard from uh, Stefan, right? Because 
she didn't drop her off. She, she has no clue. I mean, like, she either has total knowledge of what's going on or she has no clue, but she's just repeating a story that he told, right? And I don't know. It's just starting to feel a little bit more like the pendulum swinging back over in the direction of her having a little more knowledge of what happened here. Could there be a scenario where she was drugged? Like, oh, she's turned, she turned 13. Hold on a second. <laughs> That's my wife coming home. So what if she, they, you know, she's 13 or whatever, and they're like, hey, you want to try? I, I don't know. I mean, some sort of a drug, and she dies in the middle of the night or late late at night, and they're just trying to figure out what to do. Or, I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way to make it less nefarious on her part, but, man, it's getting harder and harder every second. But yeah, she's really just repeating what he's telling her to say. So you got to look at it like that. Unless you want to think of her as the mastermind and told him what to say. Close to school, across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next. We took her to school. We dropped her off close to school, across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Um, she crossed the street. Um, here, let me, let me try something here. Make this little, look a little better. I'm going to nest all this stuff here and then I'm going to apply a... that one there we go I'll do that one there we go that should look better all right there we go and walk to school what we thought walk to school um my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point um it was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school but she never made it that walk from and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up uh, she never made it to school after that I went to pick her up after school um, and she wasn't there um, so I started driving around trying, maybe thinking she took a walk maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office which is pretty close to the, the school as well <sighs> drove around and I didn't see anything I drove back to the school the school was closed I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. So all of this right here could easily just be where he's telling her what, wow, I dropped her off. And then she's responding and reacting and doing things. But there's stuff that doesn't make sense at all. Because she says like one time, Madeline's getting ready to go to school at nine and and then one time oh that she saw her in the morning. Where did I read that? I can't I don't know if I have that somewhere. I thought I was reading that earlier. Hmm. Um she did accidentally leave her phone on Monday. Um which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. Um so she left her phone at home, so there's no way to trace her. This is on Fox They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off, so it's not pinging to anything. They're conducting a search around the school, behind the school. There's a Shingle Creek. There's a, a wooded path area that you could walk. Uh, it's a hiking path, but I don't feel like that's going to find anything right now. We've had people all day on that trail sending us photos to see if anything there looks familiar and like her personal belongings and nothing is hers i'm trying to hope for the best but she seemed really certain you know like so certain that her 
kid wouldn't be found in those woods. Almost like she knew. Normally you're like, I don't know, they can keep looking. I hope they keep looking and looking and looking. You know? She didn't do that. I'm just, I'm scared for her. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want her to come back harmed. I, I just, I just want her back. Whatever that means. Just, I just want her back. If anything, on Sunday, she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, she was, she's just a happy girl and she showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy. So, you know, she had the best day. I just, Thanks. you know, there was no... There was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. Why did she say that? Isn't that a little bit alarming? You know? I mean, I guess she's trying to say that she didn't communicate with anybody, but the, the two items that are she left at home on accident and the laptop was turned off. And by the way, how would she know that, I guess? You know? I mean, we did, we talked about that the other day. People brought that up. I mean, how did she know the laptop was up? Merely because they couldn't find the ping for it because it's a school laptop and... So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I no, didn't, we don't do the body language. I didn't see any of that. We don't, we don't I'm pretend. staying at home, staying by the phone, hoping she just appears. Um, it was a surveillance camera from the church, uh, Peace Church, right next to Med uh, Hunters Creek Middle School. And do you have that video? I don't have that. Um, they didn't show me. They wouldn't show me. It was actually, they, they, my sister was the one at location and they were letting her know what they saw on camera. That's her, okay. that's her, any of what us. do you mean, truth sleuth? We've been covering this for days. That's the killer. Please, 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 if you have any information, contact me, contact law enforcement. Um, that's Steph any, Stephen any back information there. helps. Um, Maddie, if you see this, Please come home. Please be safe. I love you very much. If you have my Maddie, please just let her come home. We just want her home. We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4.45 uh, yesterday, yeah. uh, 4.45 p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning around between 8 45 and 9 o'clock in the morning she went missing. okay now now she's saying let's see let's put that in. actually it's after the eight right here so now it fits a little bit into the stefan timeline 8 45 to 9 went missing and says in second interview. Or maybe that was, I don't know which one was first, actually. Missing. Um, we dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, yeah, she was. See, right there, that whole thing right there. We dropped her off close to school. She wanted to walk the rest of the way, but she wasn't even there, right? So she's telling it as if she was there also, uh, but why not just every time you're saying this go, well, I was told that um, you know, she got dropped off. She's almost trying to sound like she was right there. She knows it really well, but then when she gets a little bit sort of trapped or whatever she goes well he dropped her off you know what i mean everything that she's saying right here is absolutely uh was fed to her by uh stefan <laughs> i have a hard time saying his name because i i want to say stefan uh spotted walking uh by the church, by the middle school, uh, on the cameras, they saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. She, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. She went to school. <sighs> um. 
All right, let's pause the show right now for a minute. Everybody, right now, if you could, if you could hit that like button for me, that'd be great. So here we go. Hit that like button, hit that like button, 10, 20, 25, 30, hit that like button, 40, 40, 40, 45, 50, do I hear 60, do I hear 60, hit that like button, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, hit that like button, 10, 20, 20, 20, 25, almost. That happens from Thank time you. Time. She's got ADHD. Uh, her memory, <laughs> she's very forgetful. Um, so yeah, there's no way to. Yeah, isn't that that report? Did I finish reading that damn thing? Hold on a second. Huh. I don't know. What, what report was that in? I thought I was reading that earlier, but I don't seem to be able to find it. When she was saying about being getting dressed. Um, okay, so Maddie dressing for school at 8.30. Law enforcement already established the child was dead by 7.50. Where did the... Who wrote the one about the 7... God, now I can't see that. No, oh, dressing for school at 8.30. Well, she also said in this interview that it was 9 in the morning. <laughs> okay. Track her right now because I have... Well, the detectives now have her phone. Um, we spoke about her birthday party. She it, it could just be that she's covering up for him. But why would you do that? You're not, you're not even dating the guy. And you're going to protect him? So something, you know, now that you put all the little parts together and everything, you know, that the, the stuff's starting to fall more on the side of her being a little bit more you know, sort of nefariously involved in this. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great but, time. Like I said, it wouldn't uh, shock I me either way. I was working. But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night, and um, yeah, that was it. I See, that part really bugs me, that sentence right there. Watch this, watch this one. Uh, I... I Told her good night and uh, uh, um, and uh, yeah, uh, I was about to really tell you what really happened, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was about it. Yeah, that was it. I that, that's just really uncomfortable. That little pause in there, don't you think? But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I I told her good night and um, yeah, that was it. I yeah. See that the, even every, everything about that didn't sound truthful to me. I I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, what was she wearing? He, she said I wasn't the one that took her to school in the morning. It was my partner. Partner. I thought you guys were broken up. Thank you, Eleven Eleven True Crime, and thanks, Georgina Stolicker. And uh, Truth Loose, you haven't been uh, following this with me over here? <laughs> she was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs, a black Jan Sport backpack with gray hibiscus flowers on it. Oh. Um, she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until after school pickup at 4, at 4 o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. That she knows how to get home by herself. Let me go back a little bit. Flowers on it. Um, she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until after school pickup at four at four o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. That she knows how to get home by herself, as if like let's just say take a, to take a bus or an Uber or something like that. She would know how to get home. Yeah, no, like uh, I know Zozo doesn't thinks this part is like how how would she not know her own address but when i was watching this too it's like look how long she's thinking about this because this is really crucial sort of you know it's like a important piece of information so she's really just delays and delays and alone correct she's trying to think in her mind sure. yeah i don't know if she would know how to get home well, why wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to make sure your child knew her own address, for God's sakes? Hey, thanks, Ginger Keys. Maybe, I mean, if someone... 
I'm thinking if someone got in the car with her and, and if she pointed the way, what roads, she probably could figure out how to get. But, like, does she know her full address? I don't think she I don't Yeah, think you she might does. be right there, Terry. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. It's the last time we saw her. Not much. Thanks she was just asleep for most Robin. of the way. Told her have a good day at school when she got out. And I love her. She said, thanks. Love you, too. That was it. Yeah. Right. Let me see that again. She does. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. So everything looked fine. It's just weird. Last time we saw her, not much. She was asleep for most of the way. Sleep most of the way to try to maybe match what might be seen on surveillance camera? Is that, uh... Told her have a good day at school when she got out. I love her. She said, thanks. Love you, too. That was it. Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? That was it. That was it. <sighs> it's hard not to. Why? I mean, hell, I, uh, she fell asleep in like 10 seconds. Got up ready for school, got ready to go, got in that car in a... In a like a, uh, let's take a look at this for a second just to mathematically I mean how far is this just and let me I can just tell you in a second here watch go like this from here let's just say this is the way they went ding 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 you know I'll just kind of come up with a really generic uh, actually that would probably be about right there and then over like this and let's just I'll add a little extra there. That's six miles. Okay. So you're going to say that she got ready to go to school, and in a nine or, you know, not even ten minute drive, she falls asleep in the car. Give me a break. All right. Drop early. I could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. Yeah, I even went out with the cops uh, where I... Well, the cops... <laughs> yeah, well, you went out with the cops because they were probably like, well, where'd you dump her? You know, where, where'd you... Uh, you know, he brings her to the, the location. I'm not even sure... Did he even go to that spot? How did they get lucky enough to have another kid that was in the area wearing a green shirt or something. I had dropped her off and we looked all up and down the road, all along the communities and there was nothing helpful. None of the cameras were pointing the street. Nothing, which in 2024 was surprising. Hey, by the way, I do want to say this one thing here. I think my channel has the best moderators by a mile <laughs> over any other channel out there okay it's not even close and if you go check out other places you'll make you'll see that it's absolutely obvious at that point all right the church across the street had some cameras and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on and that was it but it was greeny it was grainy footage and not much, not much else. Verbally, language, body language. When you drive through all this, she seemed happy. Was happy. she like, I'm going to meet she my friends? Happy. She got a happy weekend. She just Except for 13. Timothy she Cecil. 13th okay. birthday party. <laughs> yeah, I got to rewind it now. I got to rewind it now because I was reading it. The church across the street had some cameras and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on. And that was it. But it was grainy, it was grainy footage and not much, not much else. Verbally, language, body language. When you drive through all this, she seemed happy. Was happy. she like, I'm going to meet she my friends? Happy. She got a happy weekend. She just turned 13. She had a 13th birthday party. She was happy that we were all together here. And she's just very happy. She was a happy kid. She's very sweet. She's How many times do you have to say happy? You know, like you said happy like 19 times right there. She's a very sweet girl. She brings a lot of joy to us, and we just, just not knowing. They started off like any other. 
And I just want to wake up. Hey, he sounds like me when I say cry, right? Just it's set again. It does sound like that. As soon as it got dark last night, we really, we started falling apart. We knew it wasn't going to come to an end. But now we're going on 24 hours and still nothing. It's conflicting reports here and there. People say they see this or that. Ah, poor you, man. Poor you. None of it's conclusive. And uh, none that's, of it's not conclusive. Are you, you, he's excited about that. <laughs> none of it's conclusive, okay? Because it's helpful. <laughs> we just uh, want to grow back. Okay, all right. All right. This isn't this part yet. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning. I mean, how, how perfect timing is that? After we just heard that long thing about, oh, the dropping off. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near her school. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. We have video evidence that shows Stephen Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 7.35 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school-issued laptop from that dumpster. At 8.19, we have evidence that shows Stephen Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible was in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. Isn't that crazy? And then you match that up with all the rest of them? Hold on a second. Um, I'm gifting memberships. So hold on. Here we go. Right now, there we go, there we go. And welcome, oh look at LM got a free one. Man, what's going on LM, what happened there? And thank you, Lillian, twice even. Oh, from your dogs, nice, <laughs> or your pets I mean. I won't say, I don't know, if, I think you have cats too, right? So thank you. And look at that, Lanky Tour did too. So LM got one, uh, Kathy Brown, Jarhead, Jane, Chaz, uh, Vamplifier, I remember you. And then uh, let's see what else we got. My Three Sons, Shelly Waters, Betsy Barn, Samantha, and Mimi Misty. Well, welcome. Now you can use those emojis down there. Uh, one of these days I'll probably do another show where I explain those damn emojis again. And there's so many of them. Is it that fast, the chat? It seems kind of slow. It doesn't seem to be just zipping by. Well, thanks, JJ. I mean, what's weird is what you just typed in is exactly the opposite of what a bunch of the, the trolls always say. That I'm so mean, I'm just a, you know, I just, I don't know, I just like to keep things moving forward. You know? Yeah, so uh, I was asked how far it is from the school. I think it's... It's not far, but I mean, it's farther than you would just drop a kid off because apparently they were dropped off right here or she was dropped. That's what they say. I mean, she wasn't. So we already know that. And it's a quarter of a mile away. So if you took this whole track and unwrapped it, it would go right over to here. Hey, wow. Thanks, uh, Osiris Stewart, and then Mag with the cat eye. Please give Gray a thumbs up for his hard work every day. Join the Freak family and subscribe if you can. Thank you. 
Look at that right there, huh? How is that? That's see what I'm saying? The best mods in the world. <laughs> right there. Look look at that. Please give Gray a thumbs up for his hard work every day. Join the freak family and subscribe if you can. And I know that um Caligal 3 sent me a press conference that Grady Judd did uh, re regarding uh, predators and so I was thinking maybe in the middle of the day tomorrow to play that go over that if you guys would be interested it's about the same kind of people basically she told me about it so I went and found his version the one on Grady Judd's website Do you think the mother was stupid enough to say that she was actually helping him get her ready for school and all that because she was ashamed and didn't want anybody to know? I think there's more. Uh, doesn't fit on my... Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. I don't know. It doesn't fit on there. She didn't want anybody to know she was still in the bed. Uh, I don't know. Uh, she changed her story. She said that her child got up at nine and he came and picked her up and then her mom said she was still sleeping. And man, I, I just don't know what it is. I mean, I know that based on the interview I had today, it sounds like the mom has some mental, you know, maybe bipolar, you know, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there as a possibility. I'm not stating it as a fact, but various mental problems. So, Perhaps that's part of it. Maybe she's easily persuaded, and, but maybe just can't remember. <laughs> I mean, it's not a true story. So the thing is, here's what you got to look at, is the story that she's saying is a story that Stefan would have had to tell her to come up with because it just isn't reality. He's driving around at, um, we got it right here, at 7.35, Stefan is seen throwing backpack and school-issued laptop and dumpster on surveillance camera in an apartment complex. Jen says Madeline's getting ready for school at 8. Okay, I guess that's possible if he's just already throwing that away, but is, is that what you're going to be doing before? Is she still at home alive, moving around? I, I, no. Then at 8.19, Stefan Stearns returns back to... So for... Between 7.35 and 8.19, the vehicle left, but he comes back with her still in the car. I don't understand that part. Can anybody think of a good reason for that? Maybe he wanted to make it look like on camera she was alive, you know, weekend at Bernie's kind of deal. I, mean, I don't really understand it, to be honest with you. Thank you, Mama457 Rose. Uh, play what again? Which one do you want to play again? Yeah, maybe. That's the thing is, I, I'm I'm really wanting Jen to come out of this. I, I mean, just to be honest with you, because I think that uh, Stefan is a predator, manipulator, uh, absolutely, um, you know, picked her specifically, I believe, because of maybe a mental deficit and knowing that she had a daughter and so that he could do what he was going to go do. Now, is, is there more to it? Because the person I spoke to today said that they kind of had a really kinky sort of sexual relationship, the those two. And could there possibly be some other something else um, you know, going on in the backgrounds, right? <laughs> Don't know. But you guys, if you're out there, consider joining the channel. There's only, if there, we have options for $1.99 even. Cheap. You know what I'm saying?
Well, we'll call you Jennifer Lawson. And she's just Jen, okay? All right. Well, how, how would you like to be named Karen? I mean, Karen's a cool name, but it became uncool once, <laughs> like when people started saying, oh man, you're such a Karen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, there goes my stomach. I think she was killed after the birthday party dumped and he decided to move the body for unknown reasons. That's not a bad idea. Uh, you know, maybe she was in a dumpster somewhere else or they might have planned it or he might have planned it for Monday. You know, maybe that's when trash was collected there. I mean, this guy, he seems mildly intelligent in the uh, the screen grabs from Reddit, but based on some of the stuff he's done, he's he's a complete moron. I mean, the guy's a, you know what I mean? <laughs> he throws a laptop and phone in the, uh, no, the backpack. I mean, and the laptop in the trash can right at right at the apartment complex, and then the police go there and it's still sitting there. <laughs> I mean, really? Wow. Well, how about this? Maybe he just hasn't watched IDTV. He's been doing too much of the role-playing games. I mean, there are still people out there that when they commit crimes, bring their cell phones with them and they're on. That's weird. I mean, most of us who watch IDTV would realize that you should probably drive a 1969 Volkswagen Bug, leave your phone at home, and you're all good. There ain't no tracking of that 1969 Volkswagen Bug. Chuck Jones said he's a pedo for sure, but the mom knew it. Mom straight out lied in the interview where he's cracking his knuckles. She displayed duping, duping delight. You mean duper's delight? I don't, I don't agree at all. I mean, I wish Cairo was here. <laughs> Cairo would be all over that one. He, he goes duper's delight. Oh shit, I gotta, where's Cairo? <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh man, that was amazing. I think he's controlling the interview with mom. Yeah, I think he's sitting behind her to make sure she doesn't say something outside of the script in that, that one that we see him. And he's there both times, right? He's, uh, he's in both of them. And she nailed it. Like Nadia Comaneci's um, dismount. Just bam, right? So then he started. He then he felt safe to cry now, because she nailed it. Now he's gonna get in there and cry, except it doesn't make any sense, you guys. Okay, we already know that you were throwing her laptop and backpack into a garbage can. I do too. I'm just hoping she's just kind of a. Uh, She's not quite there, and so she just kind of repeated stuff that he said, etc. Yeah. I believe one of two things happened. He groomed her from an early age. Yeah, let's... Apparently, they knew each other for, like, nine years. That's what this guy said that I was talking to today. He's known him since... Um, he was 17 or no, he's known him for way he's known him for 20 years this guy that i talked to today and they were just friends and he had no clue he he just couldn't believe it but based on the information that's out there he's like man he did do it and he had his kids around him and everything but <laughs> you remember that mag come on remember that she got all those perfect tens <laughs> I 
I'm hoping mom had nothing to do with it. Yeah, me too. Uh, he's gonna... And remember, I think it was Olga Corbett was the American there. She wasn't any... Um, Nadia was like... She just... I remember that. I mean, I, God, how old was I? I think I was 11. And I still remember it. I mean, she just nailed everything. No, she was uh, Romanian. Oh, Olga Corbett was... Oh, she was Russian? Oh, that's... You're right, you're right, you're right. She was Russian and um, Nadia was... Um, I was thinking of somebody else. And Nadia was um, Romanian. You're right, she was Russian. There was somebody else, though, that was like... Who was the American... Uh, Bigsby or Grig... Something like that? That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it was a, it was insane. Oh, yeah, that's right, Kathy Rigby. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think I was right around the same time, right? No, Rigby was way before Mary Lou Retton. Let's see. So she needs to lie in the statement in interviews when that would hinder the authorities finding her? I wish the... Um, I mean, if she had just said, I don't... I wasn't there. I'm just going... I'm giving this information based on what my boyfriend said, my partner said, because he's the one that dropped her off. I think that it would just free her from all of this. Right? Right? Except she's changed some things that are outside of the story told by the boyfriend. You know, like, oh, yeah, um, you know, we said goodnight and she just kind of went to bed. Oh, yeah, uh, don't forget that, that we had her phone and her laptop, so she couldn't have made any calls. So, therefore, oh, and don't you think it's incredibly convenient? And that's one of the things that's bug bugging me, too, about something the mom's saying. She keeps making ex excuses as to why the phone is left at home. That it's just, oh, she's, she does this from time to time. She, for, she forgets it. But obviously it was left there just like the laptop was thrown in the garbage so that she can't be tracked to where she is. Right? All right, let me ask you guys something. I'm gonna about I'm gonna go uh, blow my nose and use the restroom, <laughs> but I'm gonna press this button and you guys tell me if an ad plays because it's a better way to do it instead of having it play right in the middle of your of me talking. So here we go. And a five, four, three, and watch the damn thing, right? You can help the channel out. So here we go. You can still chat while the ad's playing. So here it is.
Oh, yeah, you didn't get the ad? Uh, you didn't get one? Oh, shoot. Well, it said to press the button. How about right now? Did it work now? <laughs> okay, you saw one. <laughs> There's... I guess there was one person that saw an ad. Oh, okay, so some people got one. I just pressed it again. Oh, man. YouTube, you're struggling. You had an opportunity there. No, oh, you got one, though, huh? Hmm. All right. Weird. Wow. Look at those guys. Well, I tried to do it again. Let me try it one more time. Does it work now? Oh, wait. What does it say? Enable? Oh. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I see. It's got me on limited ads. <laughs> Shit. These guys, I tell you. They... Yeah, you, you use a word like moron, and they go, oh, good. And then after the show's over, I, I have them check it out, and they go, oh, that was fine. I agree. That person was one. All right. So apparently, currently, I'm on limited or no ads, so that's why some of you got one and some of you didn't on this video right here. I'm going to open the phone lines here in a minute. Oh, I guess she's home. <laughs> here we go. Oh, so she's home. Look at look at Blue and Chloe. Oh, look at that. Ah. All right, we're going to do, we'll just do Skype again. Right there. So you call in and tell me what you think's going on here. Do you think that she's like fully involved or is she just repeating what he said and, and, is, and is getting confused and trying to remember the story? But, but if she's repeating his story, she must be a little bit like, man, this guy, he might be involved. But she seems like she's still playing the, the Wii and all this stuff. You know. right. Hello, who's this? You gotta hit. You gotta turn off the uh, audio in the background. <laughs> all right. This is Kimberly. Um, Kimberly. So I'm watching your show. I am a new subscriber. Oh, nice. Um, and I just and I enjoy your content. Um, so I'm just gonna go right into it. Um, yesterday, I was giving the mother the benefit of the doubt that um, possibly she didn't know anything, or maybe even in the back of her head, if she thought she knew something, she was afraid to say anything, and possibly even afraid to say anything due to her being charged as well with any kind of crime. Mm -hmm. Um, for Madeline. Um, so, but uh, today, <laughs> it is a different day. I look at these. I mean, is it, um, is it mainly because that news channel came out with that? or Definitely, like, with them coming out with, I'm getting an echo, I don't know why, but. Um, definitely with them coming out with the the timeline that does it, it it just isn't adding up with her saying that she saw her eight o'clock in the morning, him be dropping or him dumping the backpack at seven thirty and possibly and dropping her off at six thirty or whatever. I mean, none of the timeline adds up. So I am now at the point where I think she knows more than 
what I thought she knew yesterday. Yeah, I think it's yesterday like, was a whole different day. It does I mean, seem more today, likely. Thinking, it, it seems more likely now that I'm, she knows something else more. Absolutely, because there's too many um, contradictions on w with his story and her story. None of it's adding up. The timeline is not adding up, and. I feel horrible because I really did want to give her the, give her the benefit of the doubt, but I believe she's as guilty as he is. Whether whether just by knowing he did it and didn't want to lose him, um, and I, you know, to me, <laughs> read, mm. be, read between the lines when I say this. I think she may feel like. Losing that dictatorship, get it, um, is more important than losing her daughter. Well, that's what Zozo just typed in. She said, if you protect a man over your child, you're a piece of shit. 100%. That person <laughs> and, was absolutely And that's what Mama 457 Rose typed in. 100%. There you go. So. There's absolutely, there's no dictator out there worth giving up my child for none i would never let it happen what do you call no what no what no. my kids are adults Dictator? now and i'll tell you one thing we we all need to start um communicating with our children better than we are now get those game controllers out of their hands get those phones out of their hands sit down talk with your children Get to know them. Let them get to know you. And, you know, go old school with it. Um, we didn't have, I mean, there have always been these issues. But I'm not saying we didn't have the issues that we have now, as many of them, as many of the issues that we have now with children. Um, little people are not respected. And women think they need a man to survive, regardless of what their children may go through. I used to have, you know, this is really funny. I, I don't know where I learned this, but I used to have dates with my kids. With my son, I would have a, a, a date with him one week, and then the next week I have a date with my daughter and then back again with my son and back and forth. I did that, and I did that for years, years. I trusted my kids, and my kids trusted me. If we needed to say something to one another, we said it. If it hurt somebody's feelings, well, you know what? It just hurt somebody's feelings. We still loved each other, and we still respected each other in the long run. But these games and the the music, some of the, not all the music, because I love music, but but some of the music that's out there, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible for kids to be listening to, and then it, it, their brains are not, um, matured enough to handle some of the things that they uh, and I'm not going to down rap music because I have a friend that he sings Christian rap so rap is not the issue but some of these uh, songs that are uh, diminishing a mother's life and I'm not going to say names but I'm sure if you know anything about it you would probably know who I'm talking about but the mother um, or the parents, we'll just say parents, or even um, friends of the family. When you diminish the people that are whole in their hearts for your future, you diminish their lives. That's my opinion. Well, and there, this there family, go. this family did not respect that child. The mother didn't respect that child. And the and the stepfather or boyfriend didn't respect this child, and it's sad. It's it's really really sad. I mean, you, uh, really you can't sad. think of a scenario where let's see, he. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it really doesn't work anymore because how how come, like she would have known that she didn't actually call him to drive him to school. That that's the key right there. Like the mother had him come over to pick her up to take her to school. That never happened. Yeah. So that means that's a, a fabricated lie. So it's almost Correct. like there's a scenario where something happened, you know, whether 
it's more nefarious or not, but like let's just say at the very less nefarious level that somehow she died at home by some thing that happened like a for drugs or something and they'd be blamed it, the, that means the whole story is made up and they just try to figure out a way to cover it all up well you respect me enough to but, stop you there but but hold on but then but then what's weird is after that they found out that he has CSAM material where he's literally having sexual relations with an 11, 12 and 13 year old as she was growing up. What what did you just say a second ago? I mean, I was just asking if you would respect me to um stop you where you were where you were going with that. Um number 1 as a mother, you listen to your child first. Now, if something happened nefarious with the boyfriend, which obviously we know did, that's been proven, um, your thing does not just fall out of your pants. Well, I, just, I, just went, I just explained that whole thing. You didn't have to repeat what I just said. So what I was saying, I, what I was saying I, a minute ago is the, uh, like when you say, See, here's what we don't. Here's the thing: we do not have. Just like the police haven't charged him yet with murder, because no. all they have is he sees him throwing stuff. In, they see him throwing stuff in the garbage can, and that she's not alive in the vehicle. So that's completely consistent with her dying at home, and now he's getting rid of things, and he's going to take her body to make Correct. it look like she got abducted or something like that. So it feels like something had happened at home, but there's nothing. It's not. I don't think she was killed. This is just an opinion. It could turn out totally wrong. So don't go, oh, Gray, you're the one that said. I think that when they found her, her cause of death wasn't immediately obvious, meaning there was no, they didn't see strangulation marks. They didn't see a gunshot wound. They didn't see something like that. Because if there were, he'd be charged with murder almost immediately even without a weapon or anything. It just would have been like, okay, you're the one that was with her driving around in the car, and therefore, but they haven't been able to prove yet, maybe they know now, because maybe the autopsy was preliminary, like how she actually died. That's why he's, he's been charged so far with the sex crimes, because those are proven on the phone. So there you go. Okay, no, I, no, I, I hear what you're saying, um, but having gone to school for criminal uh, my, my 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 major was criminal justice my minor was psychology and having gone to school for some education of, in that field i'm not saying that he is guilty nor am i saying he's guilty i'm saying together something happened because their timelines that they're putting out there like the mother saying that she saw her get last night and then 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 in another interview she said uh that she saw her daughter the morning of around eight o'clock however at the with the with the boyfriend it was said that he was seen at seven thirty, mm -hmm. throwing the backpack into the dumpster and then yeah, yeah i know but i mean uh, the thing is i just think he whatever how she he she could have died i mean i think it's going to be related to him regardless but it could be that he drugged her up like he normally probably did and maybe she died this time you know i mean who knows i, I just uh, i'm having a hard time <laughs> saying that there's something like there's a strangulation or a gunshot wound because i think he would have been charged with murder right away so they're having to figure out how did she actually well, die here then they that's can work not necessarily true sir because well not necessarily uh, but if, if they had any kind of incl inclination that the mother was some somehow involved in in the death um whether it, or even in just getting rid of the body um they're not gonna ex they're not gonna put that out there until they have their facts straight yeah i mean they, they want to get all their ducks in a row. row yeah ducks in a row they want to get all that stuff but i think if there was make sure when, yeah. they, when they file when they file that uh murder charges right. they're going to make sure that if she was involved She's also going to be put right, but if, but if the there were strangulation yeah. marks on her neck, they could immediately charge him immediately with murder. 
Well, that's you would think. not necessarily true because she could have strangled Well, she could have, yeah, and then, he, and then he's the one that dumped the body. Yeah. So that could, that's not necessarily true. You, well, I mean, when you go... Okay, yeah. when it comes well, you listen, to... I know, but here's the thing. I know you went to school and everything. You don't need to explain to me. I, I understand all of this. I've been doing this for seven years now on the show. So I don't mm -hmm. need, like, the minutia, detail stuff. So you've already said your opinion and everything. Do you have any more uh, opinions? Uh, no, anything? thank you. Have a good day. Okay, thanks. All right. Yeah, I don't need to, like... <laughs> so that was crazy how they always do that. Yeah, it's like the paralegal people. Oh, yeah, I'm a paralegal. Therefore, I know everything. Okay, I, I said what I was saying, okay? I think that it's, if there was something really obvious, they likely would have immediately charged it with something higher. Hello. <coughs> Who's this? This is Lee R.D. How are you, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it was, Lee R.D.? Okay, I got yeah, it. You said it perfectly. I got it right after I worked through it a few times. Yeah, I mean, I've okay. probably been a sub to your channel five, six years already. Mm hmm. Do am I coming in clear? Oh yeah, you're clear. Okay, I have a little echo here. I just wanted to say what I wanted to say. I really believe what you're thinking—that she was pregnant, because I took a really close look more than once of that very brief of her 13th birthday there's a there's a moment where she puts both hands in front of her stomach and cups her hands under her stomach mm -hmm. Let's see. and she's 13 and I mean my daughter is pregnant right now mm -hmm. so I know what the early pregnancy looks like currently and I really think you're onto something there with that well, I mean, I can't. I'm just, it's I'm, just a theory, though. I'm not. I don't want people to think I'm saying that's what happened. No, but take a look at that photo. Go, go slow with that little video mm -hmm. of her birthday and watch what she does. The only thing I'm concerned about is I. I really pray to God that because you've seen in many cases and everything when these young girls get abused, a lot of times the mothers blame the little girls. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. Or it could be where the mother and father were both, God forbid, you know, abusing the child. I mean, this could have gone anyway. She could have found, you know, the mother could have got angry with her when she's, maybe the daughter told her that night mm -hmm. uh, uh, that she's pregnant. Something major happened. They definitely, but I just want well, to say I mean, say he's, one been, well, he's been assaulted. You can, yeah, I mean, you have time here. But like my, the reason I came up with the theory and I was, Believe me, everybody, before anybody else talking about it right now. Could be totally wrong, though. But it was, I said, I was coming up with that because something changed. He'd already been assaulting her for two years. So what made it different? Like, if, it, if, if, he, if he was murdered by some non-sort of, you know, accidental type of way with drugs or something like that, then there was another, something happened that changed the calculus in this guy's mind and he knew that there was there's no out when somebody's pregnant right because unless it sort of you lose a pregnancy naturally you're gonna have to go out and explain why you know to your mother why you're going to the doctor and then if she has the child well who the hell's baby is it right no I agree a hundred percent with what you're saying but I thought the same way before you even said it, watching that little clip of her thirteenth birthday, if you watch it carefully, mm -hmm. slowly, she looks <laughs> before you like even. three, four months pregnant, yeah. like going into the fourth month, yeah. like three and a half, four months. Well, I, I can't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't tell by looking. No, at I that. don't know either. But I mean, like you said, something happened. I, I also like. I love your theories. I mean, you are Gray Use investigates, and you well, do. You do you watch the my show? The other idea is, like you said, mm -hmm. he's used to giving her drugs, and maybe this time it was too much. But the mother is no way going to be cleared. No, listen, I'm going to tell you this too, because I know there's probably other callers. I mean, my daughter is 39. I remember when she never left her alone with anyone. No one. That's, that's it. I mean, she's 13, yeah. 14 getting off the bus. I'd leave, and the bus stopped in front of the house. 
You know, it's weird. Was, I was listening to you. I heard, would say. Like I like Vinnie Politan, you know. So he has he he does these live shows every once in a while and by himself. And somebody asked that question. Like well, somebody said, "Women don't leave your kids alone with a man ever." And it's like, I mean, is that really what you want it to be like? I mean, have you ever thought of like? I mean, if you're with somebody, and what he said on there made sense to me. It's if if you don't trust somebody you're dating or like you really been with for a while and you trust them. If you don't trust them to be left alone with your kid, then why would you even be with that person in the first place? You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like, exactly. so, but, but if you feel like you trust that person, then there's gotta be a point where you've gotta be able to trust that. I mean, that sucks for guys, right? I mean, it's absolute yeah. bullshit for all the guys out there to have people selling a story about, oh, you can never trust the guy. When there's really well, I would never like, say that. I yeah. would never say that. All I'm saying is me as a mom was overprotective. She, you know, she has wonderful brother, cousins, male cousins, wonderful father, wonderful uncles. There was no one I was afraid to leave my daughter with. It just was my natural instinct as a mother to just make sure I had eyes all around my head. That's all. You know? <laughs> another thing, too, I'm on a roll right now, is another thing, too, mothers and, or fathers or whatever are not teaching the children the birds and the bees. They're finding out the wrong way. If you watch some of these commercials on these streaming channels, uh-huh. if a five, six-year-old kid watches a lot of the, just the commercials, you know. Yeah, they're I'm, ridiculous. I mean, children need to be told by their mom. They need to know about the birds and the bees. They need to know if someone touches you in the wrong, it's not appropriate. I mean, some young girls are so innocent, they don't know what's right or what's wrong Mm -hmm. because they weren't taught the birds and the bees. Years and years ago in the 50s and 60s, they taught it. I went to Catholic school, so they taught it in a Catholic way, I guess. But five, six years old, I knew about the birds and the bees from kindergarten and first grade. The nuns, there was a class with it. So, I mean, you know, we knew very young (laughs) what wasn't supposed to happen until you got back. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you from? Where are you from? You sound... You have a little bit of Lillian's uh, manner. Where where do you live? Where do you live in? Uh... I'm from, no, I live in Florida, but I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Boom! So. I knew it, man. Brooklynese, baby, Italian from yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm hearing a little Lillian in there. Do you guys hear that? A little bit of that? You know, I'm, you know Vinnie Politan, like you said, he started a small channel. <laughs> yeah. Been watching Vinny for years and years. I like And him. he can't even top you. I almost was going to send him a text. You need to watch Grey Hughes <laughs> because all well, you he do does. is read off two cards. Well, I've been on his, uh, well, know, he has so his... his on his own channel, he just talks, but I, I've been on his show four times now. On, no, uh, I love him. Court He's TV. great, but he needs to learn some lessons from you because, you know, his YouTube channel is not going to hit the rank you are. And, you know, he's used to reading off cue cards and stuff like that. He's not an investigator. Well, I mean, he does think, I mean, I don't think, uh, I can tell when, when I was doing the shows on his channel uh, on um, Court TV where it seemed like he was, just talking like he doesn't have cue cards when he and I are talking he's literally going yes yeah, so you know we're just having a conversation he I think I think he needs to be yeah. a little bit more like that though on his actual show where yeah he needs kinda, something to get his YouTube channel going so maybe you can give him some hints but as far as court TV he does a fabulous job uh, but yeah, his he's, YouTube channel he's, he's a little, he, you need you need to help him out <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, I, well, I need more help on mine. Channel. I want to keep building mine up. And though. don't That's... let your wife get upset, but I go to sleep with you many nights, okay? Oh, Good boy. Good night for now. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> all right, see you later. Take care. I'll right, go back in the chat. Thank all you, right, honey. Bye. <laughs> Come on. Don't you think that mm-hmm. sounded... That, that, there was some similarities to Lillian in there. You got to admit, you guys. You got to admit. And don't forget to help support the channel, you guys. We've had a long lull tonight. Where's the thing? I can't find the button. I don't see where to answer it. Hold on, you got to might have to call back again. I don't know where the answer button is. It just kind of. Hold on. Try it. Try again. Whoever that was. It, the the thing there's a button that shows up so on random screens. So try it again. All right, there you go. Hello, this is Gray. Yeah, good evening, Gray. How you doing? Not too bad. Who's this? Uh, my name's Bob Roselli on the chat. You're the what? Uh, my name's Bob Roselli on the chat. 
Oh, in the chat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to, uh, you know, without doxing myself, it's funny you guys <clears throat> brought up Vinny Politan because uh, he ran something earlier today where they showed some local maps. Mm -hmm. And actually they provided some incorrect information. So I'm not trying to help you scoop your your buddy but if <laughs> yeah, you like I, I didn't watch the rest of the show i just watched when that one little comment that he made to somebody yeah and uh so so long story short uh uh ex girlfriend of mine used to we used to live down in Kissimmee and actually lived at a condo complex uh called Venetian Bay mhm mm so Zinni Politan on his show, uh, they put a little map icon uh, at the wrong apartment complex. And um, let's see. Venetian Bay is in, it's right off of Dean. I mean, if folks are, I mean, you, yeah, anybody can get on, get on Google and look this up. But what I was getting at, it's a very uh, distinct complex because all of the individual condo units are multicolored. Um, and there's several pools, and it's a very wide east to west property on the. Uh, yeah, there's like west a big pond in the, the middle. Park. But you used to, I mean, that's where I have it. Her apartment's in Venetian uh, Bay. Yeah, well, I was just saying so, Vinny, Vinny Politan on his broadcast earlier today, if you go east and go across the street, uh, he put his pin uh, across Dean Road. Uh, into this other complex called um, the, well, the wrong Silva, one. The Silva Services? <laughs> he, he had it in something called uh, Pinewood Park Apartments. So I was just saying that if mm. you look at the uh, Perps um, social media, I think it's still actually up, his Facebook, he's got a couple selfies, and you, he's taking pictures of himself walking around in yeah. Venetian Bay because because you can see the, the eggshell colors on all the buildings. And to that end, I just wanted to say that I think, I don't know about all of them being the identical layout. I can't speak to that. But the unit I lived in was a pretty standard one uh, next to one of the small pools. And uh, you walk in, it's a big living area with an open kitchen and a master bedroom uh, downstairs with an ensuite bathroom and then some laundry and then you go upstairs to two uh, separate bedrooms up there. But I just wanted to throw out to anybody that, you know, it wasn't ever somewhere that I felt quiet. Yeah. You know, we lived reasonably close to the pool, even with some music on. I could so you live in the same apartment the... complex that... that uh... Oh, yes, sir. I mean, literally, <laughs> 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 this is, it was eerie. Yeah. Uh, I told my mother this today because, I, I mean, I live in the area and I hadn't been paying attention to this story. I'm kind of embarrassed to say that, but I'm familiar with uh, all of this, Hunter's Creek, where the school is, and uh, and this this place here, the Venetian Bay. I mean, it's a gated community, but even when I lived there only for a few months, uh, my car was vandalized and broken into. So, I mean, we didn't stay there. Uh, very long, but uh, just wanted to throw out to you that I'm guessing I might eerily be one of the few people uh, paying attention to this and, you know, interested in the internet accounts of things and being involved in further discussion than what the law enforcement or the mainstream media. Well, here, but here's the thing: I was talking, talk I was talking to this uh, guy today that has known him for the the let's see, the last twenty years. And he, he actually visited them at their house one time with his girlfriend or wife or I think it was wife. And they went in there. And you know how they say he stayed in a guest room? There isn't one. You know, she ha uh, Madeline has her own room and uh, Jen has her own room. And then there's like a living room. But there isn't another room where there's a guest room. So when, you know, he said, oh, he lived there for a year. I think he was just telling people that they broke up because he was telling people that he lived there for like a year, but they were broken up and he lived in a guest bedroom, but there isn't one. Right. Yeah. So I well, think that was all a, a I know lie. is that the layout. Um, and like I say, I guess given the, the view you're showing 
on the screen, uh, that pool uh, to the left of the one, that's like, I think, the main front pool. And then where I resided would be uh, east, or so to the right uh, considerably. So I don't know which, you know, if you're in different <coughs> portion of the complex, if there are some just two bedroom units, but you know, from above, God, if they don't all look so ticky tacky and identical. But uh, all I know is that the one we stayed in was classified as a a three bedroom unit. So mm-hmm. there would have, in fact, years, been yeah. a you know a master bedroom and then two additional mm-hmm. bedrooms upstairs. Uh, but like I said, I never met the guy. I don't don't have any uh, intel on on any of that whatsoever. Uh, just that uh, you know, it's really disappointing that. Orlando, once again, is in the news for the death of a young person, and this one seems insanely disgusting. So uh, appreciate yeah. all your effort. You well, know, hey, well, I appreciate you calling in. For, and, uh, yeah, I, got, I certainly don't want to keep the, the line tied up. i uh, big fan of radio and all of this uh, format, so I'm sure there's Very other cool. people want to call in. I don't have any other uh, comments to make other than, you know, uh, if if and when the folks at Osceola County Jail uh, know who he is, that he he'll, he'll have some interesting interaction from the get go. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I don't know. Are you out in Oregon? Or? Yeah, I'm in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, I lived well. I lived in Portland during the '90s and had one of those 503 area codes for a while. So I just figured as much. Well, there you uh, go. Hey, thanks well, for everything. Cool. About as far yeah, away as you can get. I'll get off there. <laughs> all right, all right. Wonderful right. talking to you. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I think Oregon's about as far away as you can get from there. Say no to lulls, freaks. Say no to lulls. Oh, I was about. I don't know why they hung up, but I was about to hit that button. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, sh- a a shirt and wear it saying, "Say no to lols." This is Gray. Yes. Who is this? You had to turn Hello. on the audio in the background. Let me get away from uh, from the background. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I am from uh, Corsica Island, the south of France. Oh, yeah? And I was listening, and I just want to say one thing. I agree with you with the fact that, um, you know, not trusting the man that you are in a relationship with. Well, I didn't say not to. I said it, it sucks to, for all, it just to be a blanket statement to not, Trust yes. guys, you know. And actually, I want to say that I was personally touched by my uncle. So it has nothing to do with, it, it doesn't always have to do with like family or, you know, a relationship. It can also be a family. So if you, if, if, if you start saying, well, I cannot have a man around my children, then you cannot have family around your children either if you if you go in that sense. That's if you true. see what I'm saying. Yeah, no, exactly. And they would probably feel a little safer even. Hey, we're family, don't yeah. say anything, you know. Right. Exactly. Hmm. That's all I wanted to say. What's up? But you're are you in France right now? In the south I mean actually in in Corsica Island. Kosaka Island, man. Jeez. What made what, <laughs> yeah. what made you watch my show uh, out on some beautiful island somewhere? <laughs> because I'm interested in, the, it, in a lot of things, and I watch everything, so I thought it was interesting that you that you talk with the people, you know, that you have. I think you are one of the only ones that I have seen that talks, that interact with people on the phone. I mean, there's other people that As do it. I try to. I wish I did it yeah. more than I do, but I got yeah, your island well, up you on do, there. I, f- I feel you. I, I feel you do it much more than other channels that I have seen. Well, cool. I guess. Uh, I mean, it sounds like something I should be doing a little bit more. So you're like a little bit uh, west of. Uh, looks like 
Italy. Yes, yeah, because yeah, I like the. Uh, I like, what was your question? I didn't. I didn't understand. Well, I, I see. Well, I'm just saw. I'm looking at your island on Google Maps right now. It's just like in, okay. In, it's in uh, the God, man. I mean, the Tyrrhenian Sea or something it, like that, right there to the west no, of Italy. No, it's in. No, it's in the south of France. No, I see it, but there it's like in this ocean over here. Let's see. Yeah, it's, we we surrounded by water. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. But like, it looks like you're, it looks like west of Italy and then south of France. Like you're just in that. We we was we we was actually Italian before we became French. This is the island of Napoleon. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's crazy. I know a lot of people don't a lot of people don't know about the island, but it's called in French. It's called the. Uh, the island of the beauty because if you go around Corsica all around Corsica it's like you you've been to uh you have different oh, man. sites <laughs> that look like like other island oh wow, it's amazing looking it looks like they've got these roads with brick walls on the side and you're just driving around up in the mountains and very beautiful yeah it's very, it's very dangerous to drive in Corsica <laughs> yeah, I can, I can probably I can see that. I mean, you make the wrong turn, you're going to fall a thousand feet down a cliff. But, and yeah. and, they, and they love to drive very fast. Oh yeah, well, well people doing that are yeah. nuts on there. Yeah, yeah very cool. Okay. Very cool. So you're welcome, and uh, thanks for uh, calling. Happy to, that I was able to talk to you. Well, thank you for calling in. Call in again sometime. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> that was that's crazy. Yeah. Hello, this is Gray. Who's this? This is Carla Gray. How are you doing? Not too bad. How's it going? <laughs> no. huh. Well, we have a theory here. My husband is thinking, you know, what if the mom was in on it? Like, what if the mom was abusing her with the boyfriend? Well, that's sort of what the person that... Uh, I was talking to today kind of sort of as a possibility was saying because they're they do like this kinky stuff and maybe there was something maybe they're all involved or you know because there's those images on the phone I don't know I don't know and all of a sudden Sorry. the little one comes up pregnant she's gonna tell or another theory we were having was okay so I was um arred by five members of my family for many, many, many years. So another theory that we came up with is if you groom a little girl enough, it's a possibility they start to fall in love with you yeah, they don't know because they don't know what's wrong. Huh. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think somebody also mentioned that too. Yeah. Like, uh, the and other like, day, somebody what said if, that. You know, she said, hey, on her birthday, uh, you know, you're either going to be with me or I'm coming out and I'm telling everybody what's happened. And now my mom, because mom knew about yeah. it, right? Well, I think, I know, I, but okay, I think, just, I think if I think in that scenario, he probably could have smoothed it out. If he, if that was really the right? case, like if she had said it, if you know, if you don't be with me, I think something like that, he would, he could have smoothed it out, and and she, you know, something. Well, I think that he was in a. I think you you'd have to be in a no win situation for to kill somebody like that, right? Like he had no out. What if the mom and the daughter got into a fight and the daughter exposed him and she snapped? And the mom snapped and hurt the daughter herself. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a million different theories out there, but you think this guy would take the whole rap for it? This guy, I, I, I don't know if he would take I the rap in a scenario. I don't think he is going to take the whole rap for it. I think that's why they have not arrested him yet on it, because maybe he sat down and said, hey, yeah, I did touch her, yeah, I did take videos, but the mother snapped and I was just Right, but if, but if that's the case, then wouldn't they have arrested the mother already? Because it would be an eyewitness that said that she not, not unless they can totally... Yeah, not unless there's enough evidence that they can prove that. I don't know. I just, this is getting really sad, Gray, all these poor little girls and little boys going missing, being hard, you know, like, there has to be something that us as the people can actually do to stand up and make a difference. Yeah. 
Well, I, you guys right. got you guys got your theories in there, and we'll just yeah. uh, have to see. Oh, I got my theories in there. <laughs> I thought she was involved. In what's what's right? your, what's we both your husband's thought she theory? was involved from the very beginning. Just just yeah. her. I don't know how. Well, she always seemed a little her. odd from the beginning, but I I'm trying to. We've had so many cases where it seemed like somebody was involved, and they weren't at all, mm. and everybody's accusing them. Absolutely. And there's still a shot in this one That's that she right. she isn't. I mean, it could be just that she's got a mental deficit. She just repeated everything this guy told her. But except the problem is you got these other elements that it seems like she's covering stuff up that wasn't in the story originally because her story was just kind of the the driving to school but then the part about well she went to bed and then um you know she left at nine in the morning uh well now it was eight in the morning i saw her getting ready and so there's a lot of things changed in that that aspect so it makes you nervous yeah and then i slept in and we were running late and then he says oh i dropped her off early well which one was it you're running late or you were early uh yeah because you know, at one yeah. point at one point they they had slept in and then and then he came out and said, "Well, I was I dropped her off early, about ten minutes early at the church. You know, I feel bad because I dropped her off early. No, I don't know. There's just too much weird stuff going on. I just wanted to call in. I just started watching your show three days ago, so I wanted to call in and oh. give you our opinion. Oh, well, I know there was another Carla that watches the show all the time, so I thought that was you. <laughs> I wasn't sure because you know, no. she's never called, or, or maybe no. This is Carla from Canada, but oh, okay. I do. I have been writing on chat for the last three or four days, but I haven't called you. But I thought we'd call you tonight and give you our theory, and and how I hope the mother wasn't involved. I really do, for her sake. I really hope she wasn't, because that's something that you're never going to get over if you were involved. You know. Yeah. Well, the guy that I interviewed, no uh, the guy that I interviewed today, he just messaged me saying he thinks he would take the rap. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> take the rap. I, the mom, not, now, eh? then I just said you do, and I said why, and then he's gonna. Now we'll get to see the response to that. Right. Well, maybe he would. You know, some guys love their spouses enough to do that. But if you're doing that to their child, yeah. I don't think that's love. But they weren't even married, and apparently they were supposedly broken up those last three months. Yeah. Or yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. He weaseled, he weaseled his way back in because he missed the daughter. Oh yeah, right. He weaseled his way back in because he missed the daughter. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's the thing right. is, I guess they were broken up for not just those last three months. He lived there. And he said he lived in a different room to friends. Like, oh, yeah, we're broken up. I live in a different room. And then he finally moved out of there three months ago. But, man, he must have been wow. so paranoid because three months ago, he knew he had no more control over what the daughter would say. So I bet you he's always texting. I bet you there's a million text messages between him and, his, and uh, Madeline to try to keep her on the hook and make sure that she doesn't say something. And then he got up there and he was like, man, my parano, you know, I, we still don't know what the why part at the end, like what happened. But Yeah. Right. The police really aren't sharing that much with us. Are they? Well, they can't. I know they can't, but <laughs> well, I hope they, I hope they come to uh, some kind of press conference soon to let us know what's going on. Gray. I really do. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't really have much left to say, but I'm going to keep watching your show. And, uh, well, thanks. I think I might become a, a, an actual member here pretty soon. Oh, cool. You, get, you use the emojis, you know, and I'll explain all the emojis yeah. one of these days. <laughs> we will explain them one of these days? <laughs> yeah. It takes a while. It takes like 20 minutes or so. But there's a whole bunch of them on there. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, well, you have a great night, sir, and I'll catch you again. Well, you too. Thanks for calling in. All right, bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. What? Hello, this is Gray. Hey, Gray. Hello. I'm sorry. I sound nasally. I got a cold. Um. Have you ever thought maybe who's this that uh this is Tennessee shine Tennessee shine uh, 
As in, like, yeah. moonshine from Tennessee? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tennessee, yeah. I live <laughs> on the border, though. Okay. I live on Kentucky, Tennessee border. But uh, you do you think maybe that she allowed, like, them to kindly date? Because you know how screwed up our world is now. Like, some parents think it's okay for your daughter's the sleep with older men and stuff and got caught up in it, pregnant and then everything just went to hell in a handbasket and they just didn't know what to do, you know, because just with the interview yesterday, that's all kept going through my mind. Like, this sounds so fishy to me. Like, maybe she was allowing them to date and break up and get back together and break up and get back and I don't know. I was just I don't know. Well, wait, wait, that wait. could be possible. Well, what is your theory? I mean, I, I had a hard time making out what you like reason. that maybe the mom allowed I allowed it. The shenanigans to go on. You know what I'm saying? But then that, why would there need to be I mean, I guess uh, was she threatening to tell on both her mom and Stefan or something? Dad, like, or being pregnant. I think the pregnant theory is very, very, that's definitely in the cards. Like, and that's when everything went to hell in a handbasket. Like, they probably was like, you got to board it and everything. And she's like, well, I'm going to school and I'm going to tell or something and something went down and went crazy or something. I don't know. I just, with that interview you done yesterday, that was the first thing that went through my mind because they kept saying they was going back and forth, you know, like, and then the game and all that. Did you watch the one today, the interview it's, it's today? All, was that today? No, did you watch the one today, the one with Lori? Oh, you? no. I, yeah, see, it's weird how so many people did. didn't even know that I made one, but I put out one this morning that's uh, you know, should be the highest viewed one because it had crazy stuff in it. Like literally, he had semen. Uh, he would store semen in little bottles, and that he would. He thought that if you put it in women's drinks, they become pregnant. Uh, I mean, he, there was it just went on and on and on. You got uh, so that's what's so crazy. Nobody went and watched this one when it should have been oh, well, seen I'm a million go, times. Oh, yeah. I missed it. I didn't. That yeah, one. no, I made. I put out a video I'll today at eleven in the morning, and nobody saw. Maybe it. that a uh, unbelievable. That might make me understand a little. Yesterday, when I seen that, I was just thinking, you never know. The mom, because there's not boyfriend and girlfriend, but then they say they was or were, and maybe they played it off like they had boyfriend and girlfriend, and they was gonna let them date and all this. So I don't know. I just was thinking, this is just so weird. How would this be going on under someone's roof and them not know? I just, I just... Well, maybe her job is a, you... such where there was hours of her not being home. You know, because oh, she, she did true. miss that birthday party, right? So maybe she has different hours where... Right. Yeah, and wasn't that weird? Okay, her birthday really on a Thursday. And wonder if you're really off on a Thursday, but you're going to wait to have it on a Sunday? Yeah, it's kind of, Weird. well, maybe it's because um, the rest of the family couldn't be People there. People do that, yeah. but if you're going to change the date of your child's birthday, why wouldn't you take it off? Well, it could just be that, uh, you know, the birthday, her birthday fell on a day where all the rest of the family couldn't right. be off. So she said, well, I'll just come later. Uh, you guys can still do the birthday. And, and she explained how they, yeah. she explained all of her presents and stuff, but... We don't even know if any of that part's true. Yeah, well, that, that seems like the whole thing's a lot. Just like she was like on the one interview, I took her to school. And I was like, God, is anyone not catching that? She's saying I. She's not saying we in this one. She's saying I took her to school. Then on the other interview, she said well, you mean we. we. Well, no, she said she we, says, we, we. No, I she, mean he. Yeah, he, not I. You know, yeah. Yeah, but she said I on the one interview with the I don't remember her saying with the, I. the guy. I yes. think she said we. She that says the guy. I. Yeah, with the girl she says we, and then she 
the he, but when she does the interview with the guy, she says I. No, but I just played it. When she's with the boy. guy, she says we too. I just played it. The the you, I promise she says I, because okay. my mouth dropped, because I was like, Okay, well, we can Which one is it? We, he, or I? <laughs> oh, you got me all confused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe that's we'll go back and listen to her, it. That's what made me really worry. I mean, there was like the first three red flags when I was like, I, we, and he. I was like, okay, what is it? Yeah. Or what, well, I mean, which we know none of it did happen. It was all lies, so... Anyway, it goes, it was a lie, which, you know, she could have been asleep and thought that he took her. But, yeah, yeah listen to her, and I'm going to watch that other one as soon as this one's over. I want to go back and watch that one because I really want to watch it. Because you're, I bet you that's where people was getting all the other information today on these other things. And I was like, you're so full of shit. I watched it live last night, and I didn't hear no crazy crap like that. And I was like, and I was wondering where they was getting it from. And I bet you that's where they've seen it on your other interview. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to watch it. I will go watch it. All right. We'll go check it out. After I watch it. And All right. comment underneath right. it and let Thank us know what you. you thought. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you guys, I'm I'm feeling triggered. It's a trigger money, honey. You ain't funny. You need me some money. <laughs> Here it is. We have a trigger bunny on this show, you guys. So if you're really feeling bad about something, you can watch the trigger bunny and feel better. Hello, 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 hello. Who's this? Hello. Oh, nobody there. Got to be able to speak. Doom, doom, doom. You hate that trigger, buddy? How <laughs> come? It's awesome. I, I think it's freaking great. The trigger bunny. There's a channel out there that literally holds up a little bunny because they're going to be talking about something that might be triggering. Give me a freaking break. Hello? Hello? Hello, who's this? This is Jamie from Boston. Hello, Jamie from Boston. How are you? Not too bad. So I was listening to, I've been listening to his show, new to the channel. Did you hit the subscribe button? Yes, I did <laughs> actually. Okay, well thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just wanted to comment on a couple things, you know, I did watch your earlier video, um, with the caller, I think it's name was, um, Mark, right? Uh, I think it was, wasn't it Ryan? I don't remember now. Yeah. That was Ryan. Yeah, maybe there were two over the last couple of days. The friend. I don't. I don't. I don't think it, there was a mark. There was a chase. Um, hold on, I can tell you. Yeah, I could be wrong. It was. It was the interview that was posted this morning. Yeah, uh, I think that was Ryan this morning. Yeah, that guy is like morally vacant. And so there was a Frank. There was a Ryan. And then Chase. Who's morally right. vacant? You mean uh, the, which guy, who are you talking about? The one that was on and he was saying that um, he had seen pictures years ago. Well, that was, when they were that was Chase. He didn't say he saw pictures. He said that his friend, uh, that was also a roommate, he saw pictures <laughs> and then there was the, he got like paid off not to say something. That was the first one. That was the chase right. interview. They were all morally vacant. I mean, no, I, I see. But here's the thing: is I, I th this is years ago. I don't like when people, you get people whenever if people are calling in to give you context on a case and try to 
give you stuff when people start trashing the people calling in to get more information. Well, okay, so if you were okay, hold on a second. Let me tell you something. I think you're morally um, bankrupt. If I said vacant. that to you, vacant, whatever. If I your vote, you're morally vacant. If I said that to you, would that be? Would you feel bad or? I mean, so it's obviously that you're you're trashing the two people. The one one of them didn't even call in. The guy that called in was just telling a story from um, a while ago, like years and years ago. They're coming. They're calling in to give some context to a a person that very well could have killed a young girl and was sexually exploiting them. And then you're just focusing on that part. It, it makes them not ever want to call in. People everywhere around would never want to call in again because there's people like you that want to just trash them when they call in because they didn't, they didn't act exactly the way you wanted to, right? No, 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 no. no. You've misunderstood me. Oh, okay. Um, I'm saying that even if it was they were, you know, in their mid thirties or what have you now, I'm a forty seven year old woman from Boston. Mm -hmm. And when they were eighteen and he was displaying, you know, certain behaviors. Yeah. That's old enough to know like there's something wrong and a discussion needs to be had with you know, mm. it needs to be reported. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I, I think everybody agrees that in the perfect world that those people way back then, one of them should have said something, especially the one that saw the inf the information. Instead, he was in a bad way financially, so he took money to not say anything, even though he might not have said anything anyways because they were all friends. So it's like a long time ago. Everybody agrees that yeah they should have said something but can't we just sometimes in life you just go like this man they sure should have said something they even admit it that they should have said something you know so it's like it's just a total waste of time to sit around and just keep ruminating and going over and rehashing and trying to villainize people that are just calling in to they didn't have to call I'm in at all i'm not trying to villainize any anybody at all i'm just trying to say well, that you said they're morally you know, vacant an example <laughs> for those that in the future might think what good will it do if i say something well this guy was 17 mm. 18 16 mm. um exhibiting these behaviors and mm. And there was proof, there was, you know, evidence to back that up, that you should see something, say something, because this guy wasn't doing this at 18, 19, 16 years of age, and then putting a pause on that button, shutting the light switch off, and then yeah. in his later 30s, doing those same things again. Other people, yeah, other but I mean, I don't. I think it's a little too strong to say that those that they're morally vacant. And now they're not vor morally vacant. Okay, so uh, you could say, man, I sure wish those, you know, one of them had thought more about, like, man, we should turn him in. You know, mm -hmm. that's all you can really say. You know, uh, one of them just called the show and was referring to somebody else, but you said that he was morally vacant, and that really isn't. It's not cool. You know. If, if somebody's going to take the time to call into the show, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying and everything like that. Like, uh, man, they really yeah, should have said something. But, you know. Mental. I'm a laboratory scientist. I've been a laboratory scientist for 27 years. What does that have to do with anything? I mean, what does being a laboratory scientist have to do with anything that we're talking about? I'm saying I'm a very educated woman, and I've seen especially because I've worked with some of the top pathologists in the country. Okay, um, but so if you've worked with some of the top pathologists in the country, what does it have to do with this? Because we see those cases. We see what happens on the table when these situations come about. Mm -hmm. You know, we... Right. 
do autopsies. We care well, I can tell you this. I, I was a paralegal for 19 safety. years. I'll tell you what, I know everything. I'm an absolute I'm expert. I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. I missed what you said. I said I was a, I've been a paralegal for the last 19 years, so I know every single thing. I'm just kidding. I, I, I hate when people drop in, this is what I do. I'm a rocket scientist. Therefore, what I'm saying is correct. I really no, don't I'm give not a damn. No, not saying that either, guy. Well, you, so wrong. Well, no, but you kind of are. You you jump in with your credentials for absolutely no reason at all. It had nothing to do with anything. I did jump in with my credentials. I was just saying I'm an educated woman, and I don't feel mm. like, you know, just because I'm sharing my opinion on a platform that... No, I understand you you're selling your opinion, but I what I don't like... Here's what I don't like. When I people call in and they trash with the guests that, that I have on. To, you know what I'm saying? You know, like when they call in and trash... Act, see you later. Okay. Material yeah. in the computer. Okay, bye. All right, see you later. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Yeah, like when you have people call in your show, the last thing in the world you want is people trashing them. <laughs> Hello. Please answer. Hello, who's this? Grace, hi. It's This is Rachel. <laughs> hey, Rachel, what's going on? Hey, I just wanted to thank you for your excellent content. You're my favorite true crime show on YouTube, and well, me and my you. husband love watching you, and thank <laughs> you, especially for the Brian Koberger, uh, the, you know, the maps that you made and the all that shit. And I, I just want to be the opposite of that chick who just called in, because, <laughs> oh, my God, God I, I, I literally was like, oh, yeah. answer I, my phone. I, I, we, everybody yeah. thinks in their mind, like, man... It would have been great if they called in, but nobody really knows how they would do if it was one of their good friends back then. And it's just sort of one no, of those I things know, where, listen. you know. Yeah, but I also want to say my husband and I are both from Portland. We now Maya? live on the Long Beach Peninsula, oh. not too far away. We come to Portland all the time. Oh. Um, and I just appreciate you so much. You're so cool. We love <laughs> watching you. And I, my favorite thing in the world is when you go, Gray, you're so mean. So we, <laughs> we love it. Gray. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wait, where is and Long, Long Beach? A, uh, where is that in Portland? I'm a pa oh, 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 my God. Not, it's not in Portland. You go over it's in the Washington, Astoria right? Bridge. It's in Washington. Yeah, the I know Megler Bridge and yeah. then up here. Yeah, Washington. But we're basically... Oh, there goes a the car. Yeah, we're up here on this peninsula, and we, um, you know, thank God we have Wi-Fi, and we watch you every night. And we're in Portland all the time because my kids live there, and his kids live there. And anyway, I just so appreciate you. Well, thank you. Well, I'm glad you guys watch. You're are you, welcome. Are you, are you channel members or? No, that's what I was going to say. Whenever oh. I can, I'm a, pa a Patreon. I've been a Patreon, and of course, I'm oh. a channel member. Um, subscribed and. Whenever I can, I give, you know, so. Well, thank but you. But we're broke. We're poor. We're, we're hard working. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a shitty economy yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah, but whenever I can, dude, I'd love, I'd give you all the money that I give any channel <laughs> at all. You're like, you're the first channel that I would give to. And, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Maybe we'll have to have like a Portland I mean, I, Crime Con just for all of the freaks that live over here. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. Like, if you ever get a chance to come up to the Long Beach Peninsula, because, well, I don't know, it's a fun place to come in the summer. It's it's a tourist trap, kind of. But, we you don't. Know, anyway, if you cool. ever get a chance to come up here. It's not too far up to there, right? It's, it's, up there. So isn't it like 40 miles up into Washington, something like that? It's, it's okay, from Portland, it's two and a half hours. Oh, so maybe a little further. So. 100 miles. Yeah, you have to go to Astoria and then go over the bridge, and then from there it's 45 minutes from the oh, bridge. I see. Okay. But it's a cool place. Yeah. Awesome. We've only had two murders in the last, ever since I've been here for 10 years. Oh, what a bore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the, yeah, the other thing that we really appreciated was the um, when you were driving around trying to, you know, uh, do the timeline of that serial killer that was in Portland or. I didn't really follow the end of that, but when oh, you yeah. were like driving on that um, I five bridge and two hundred five, trying to go, okay, he came here and he came here. Yeah, I think it was the. I didn't. Well, we don't know what that person was. Yeah, those. Remember those five girls that were. That was just recently. Yeah, yeah. Huh? We, yeah, I never even exactly. got a follow up on that. I wonder what the hell they came up with. Hmm. Yeah, but your your coverage on this Madeline Soto, it is incredible, 
And like yesterday, I was like, oh my God, he's talking to one of the dude's friends. What? And <laughs> just, well, I you. just appreciate your content the way you go about it. Even my personality. Some people just hate me because yeah, of and your personality. We love it. <laughs> no, my husband calls you sarcastic gray, but I'm like, I love gray. Come on, and he loves you too. But yeah, oh, it's sarcastic gray. He can always call your voice because, you know. But I don't. I'm sarcastic too. I'm super sarcastic. But yeah. I love the way that you do your thing, and you're like, if you don't like it, get the fuck out. You know. Yeah. So, what's your uh, What's yeah, your screen name in here? That. Your uh... You're um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's just Rachel Daly. Now, oh, do you ever comment in the chat with everybody or? Yeah, I've commented maybe once or twice. Yes. Oh, come on. You got to get I'm a like, oh, more I'm often. I'm not than... like one of those. I know. I should get more in there. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, do that. But I'm usually just sitting there going, oh my God, and we're watching it on this big screen and then I don't have my phone. So, but I'll do that because, yeah, there's a lot of times when I want to say things like, well, one thing I said to you one time was, I love it when you say, great, you're, so maybe you remember me. If you, I love it when, just like what I just told you, I love it when you say, great, you're so mean. That was one thing I commented Gray, in the chat. you're but, so mean. But I bet a lot of, yeah. yes, and oh my God, also, <laughs> our favorite thing is, me and my husband's favorite thing that you say is, uh, um, it's a house. It's a house. Well, yeah. Well, that's actually the. I'm not even Classic. saying that. It's. It's a house. Well, no, I know. Yeah. I know that Murdoch is saying it, but yeah. that's our favorite. Yeah. You know, you're the first one that started that. It's a house. Yeah. Does anybody so else use that, that one? Yeah. No, no, you're the only one. But I love it because it's like it's a house. Well, nice. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Rachel. Man, you made me I made me feel good for a few minutes. You're welcome. All right, you make us feel good. We love your true crime. You're from Portland. You're right. homeboy. Keep doing nice. what you're doing. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Say hello to your husband okay. too. All right. Okay. <laughs> I will. All I right. will. Okay. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Wow, that was so cool. Oh boy. Let's see if this one's another one that'll get angry. Hello. This is Gray. Hey, Grace. I'm... Who's this? Ivan Victor. How you doing? Oh, it's Ivan Victor. Hey, what's going on, Ivan Victor? Man, this case, I tell you, it's from one day to the next, right? It's, uh, you know, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt like everybody else. Like, you know, I'm a parent, and as you are in the same thing, you know, about a, a parent selling their own kid out, like, <sighs> but... It, it's only going to get worse, I think, from here on out. And, uh, you know, I just, this whole idea of she was afraid of him, of what he might do to her if she lied. Like, look, there's a whole news crew there. Like, you have at least a half a dozen people there filming you while you're on whatever news channel she's on. Like, if you just say what you know is true, what is what, what's he going to tackle you in front of the news? Like, it's just, I understand that she might not be all there, and I empathize with that, and I get it, but you don't do that to your kids. Like, I, I, I don't know. Well, one well, well, thing I can give her a thing is, is if she, when she was telling those interviews, if that's just the story, he was like, oh, man, you know, I don't know what happened. They, they might think I did something. Could you just, this is what happened, though. I dropped her off here, and then she just went with that story but now it's different. But we don't well, know. There's some things that she changed that don't f seem like they were part of the story. Exactly. And that's my whole point, I guess, is that I don't really care, like, why she did it. And I don't care uh, if he was, you know, the catalyst behind it or if he's just overwatching her, making sure she says the right thing. Because I know that, like, that could be a possibility. Like, at some point, like, you have a responsibility, right? Like, you have, a, it, this is your, I don't know, it just baffles me. And I, I, I just think, I, I'm just so grateful that 99.9% .9 of these cases, it seems, when it all gets sorted out, that the perpetrators are absolute idiots. Uh, absolute first grade certified dipshits. 
okay, uh, who don't think street cameras exist, who don't think that businesses have cameras, who don't think that there is able to be verification on phones, who think that wiping your phone actually means wiping your phone. None of that is true, but thank God that these people think that it does because they always get caught by their own ignorance and arrogance, I guess. Uh, as, and he should know better, right? Like, wasn't he, like, into programming? Like, didn't he have some background in that to some degree or no? No, he was good at computers. Well, good. <laughs> like, does he, does he not realize that his phone is a computer? Like, I mean, it's, it's just, thank God for that. Because, like, without it, like, it, it just makes me think, like, how did police do this 50 years ago? Like, every case we ever hear about, it's always their own, you know, just complete uh, buffoonery that gets them caught with a device of some kind. And so, man, like, mm-hmm. it, it, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, the interview today was great. Uh, everybody should check it out if they haven't. I know a lot of people haven't. We have a lot of new subs and a lot of new members. You should go check it out because there are things in there that are way too crazy to make up. I believe everything that interviewer said today. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, interviewee. Uh, yeah, I think it was yeah. one thing that's finally pointed to something really sort of deviant going on. Well, you know... And I can empathize with the guy because, you know, like when someone that your parents know that just comes around and brings a kid along, like he's not actually your friend, right? He's just there and you're a kid and you don't have a lot of friends and you're all homeschooled. And so like you just hang out with him. And so, you know, he's just like sort of like stuck with this guy, right? Like he's just stuck. Okay. You know, she comes over and uh, to do the horse thing and brings her kid along and well, you're going to, you're going to start seeing some things and noticing some things. And so, uh, I thought his uh, answers were very believable, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, well, I actually and, verified that he lived right exactly where he said he lived. I found I on the side. I looked him up. He lived two houses away, exactly like he said. I looked up the um, parents of uh, Stefan, where they Stefan, when it, where where they lived at the time, and that's exactly where they lived, two houses away during the same years that yeah. that guy said. So, I mean, isn't it interesting that we all sort of like suspected that there would be details that would come out about his earlier, you know, uh, pervertedness that weren't being revealed at the time because nobody knew about it. And, you know, it all comes out when, when the story comes out. But uh, I think it all pieces together in not just a, uh, a chronological timeline or a time, you know, but just the, the timeline of his sort of progression into what he became. And the last thing I'll say, and I know I said it a couple times in chat, but for me, like, it seems interesting that this all happened right around her 13th birthday. And the only reason I say that is because of the people and the sickos and the perverts that I met uh, yeah. when I did my time inside. And all of them had a rationale for whatever age they did their awful... Yeah, except he was already assaulting her for two years prior. But I said that same thing, like maybe 13 meant yeah. something. But anyways, I mean, think, and maybe that's when okay. she could get pregnant and she maybe, you know, again, that's sort of around the time you'd become, you can get pregnant. To me, I just think in his sick mind, that gave him a green light. You know what I mean? Like to do whatever he wanted. But he already did it <laughs> for years, yeah. two years yeah. he'd already been doing stuff. So <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. But. All right. Just, well, anyways, yeah, crazy, right, uh, crazy, crazy times. I guess we'll just have to wait for more information to come out to really know. But all right. keep up the good work, man. Thanks, Ivan. Have a good one. All right. <laughs> all right. See you. Yeah. Uh, what do I want? I'm out. Love the freaks. I only speak. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're we haven't there hasn't been a super chat in here for hours. Man, you guys are like you did stuff early on, but man, it keeps the it's just like I said, say no to lols, and my God, you guys are you guys must love lols. Yeah, we're we're over the goal. We, uh, you know, like there's always a goal 
but you know, this is this isn't anywhere near like the other night or anything like that. Where are we at? Let's see. There it is, right there. So these are the nights that can make up for later in the month when everything gets slow. These nights will make up for those. You guys know how it goes. All right. Well, I hope I wasn't too mean to the couple of callers, but they just, it was crazy. I hate when people do that kind of shit. Yeah. Oh, I worked over here, but two callers in a row did the same thing. Hello. Hello, who's this? Hello. Who's Thanks, that? Robin. Thanks, Robin. Ooh. You got to turn down the audio in the you back. Turn down the audio. Hello. Ah, oh, forget it. Jesus, I don't know what this guy's doing. Got to say some words, you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I gave him enough time, and it just kept going and going, and then people just want to act like they're experts. I mean, I here's the thing: is I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm an expert on like animation and sort of that kind of stuff, but you know, I'm good at this other stuff where I can analyze crimes. I hear the information, I put it together, and I come up with something reasonable based on the facts in the case. Hello. 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 Oh Jesus! Who's this? Okay. This is one of the people watching your stream, they said. God. Oh, uh, this is now it's gonna keep going and going. Here I hold on a second. Call again. Here it comes. Thank you, Kathy Shiflet. And the lull continues. Yeah, hold on, hold on a second. saying, Brad. Hello. Hello. What's going Yeah, I can hear you. Who's this? George. Your name is George? What's going on, George? I had called you the other night. Okay, what's going on? Well, I had a couple of questions. Uh, does anybody know when she had texted and who she had texted to that she wanted to move and live in the woods? Yeah, and that's something. Question I don't is, know. I tried to find that. It was just in the paper. It was in like an article, but it doesn't really say anything. Okay, my second question is, if she was, killed in the apartment or the condo how was her body possibly moved to the vehicle without, without anybody noticing it. or was he just that stupid to just sling yeah. a well, teenager I, I was over reading something over? earlier where I, I thought it said that they could see that she was alive somewhere but I for some reason I can't seem to find that I thought I read earlier where they could see that she, oh no, I think I misread that. It, I thought it said that she was seen looking through her backpack, but that's not what it said. He said he I'm saw her. I'm just wondering if she left the condo alive yeah, to I think get he, into the vehicle. Yeah, I think it's a possibility, but maybe it was in the middle of the night, like at four in the morning. Because, I, like I said, if you missed the beginning of the show, there's some information out there that he was accessing an account 
and it's not anywhere going to be close to any mainstream media or anything. But this guy that I know, he's, he knows what he's doing. Where at 4.40 something in the morning, he was accessing this account that's known for, uh, you know, avoiding detection and, you know, you know just hard to track. Uh, and it's used for, like, child porn and things like that. So he... Right. Uh, I'd, I'd heard... Yeah, I'd so... Heard that. So that might have maybe maybe something happened early in the morning and she was put in the car. But then why is he bringing her back? So I guess it could be like maybe he went somewhere with her early in the morning and then he drove back and for some reason put the phone or the backpack and the laptop in the garbage. And then he drove there and went and got her again because he thought that's not a good enough place. So he drives it's back not and a she's good still, enough a good enough plan yeah and then she's back in the car well the good enough place where she he put her originally so it could be where at four in the morning he puts her in his car drives away and puts her somewhere but then for some reason the he school. comes back and then he dumps near the school yeah or something and then he but well not well i don't know because the timing doesn't match with what he was saying and then maybe he dumps the he goes laptop and, and the backpack and, and the, her back. Well, no, you, and then has changed his plan. Well, no, you just you just no, you missed the part. You, you interrupted, so you didn't hear the part where he put the backpack and the laptop in the garbage can at the apartment complex. Yeah, that was at seven thirty, and then at eight yeah. uh, eight nineteen he returns. After dump, so like at 7:35, he puts the backpack and the laptop in the dumpster, and then at 8:19 he returns. So that means he left after that, and likely, um, I mean, is she in the car now, or did he dump her body somewhere earlier, come back, put her backpack and her laptop in the apartment complex garbage can, then? drive back out and get her and then he shows back up at 819 with her body in there and then he moves her somewhere else i mean i, I don't know it's just pretty pretty stupid crap no matter how you look at it right yeah well that's all i've got well what what, what were you i mean what was your what are you thinking if you add in the uh well, 735 I'm, I'm thinking that uh, at some point in the morning he probably killed her and then took her to the school and dropped her body off early in the uh, way early in the morning to uh uh you know make it look like that uh you know he had already had this story cooked up that he dropped her off at school and that uh, she was maybe murdered at school or on the school grounds cuz they said that uh there was evidence or something of her being near the school ground. Is that? Did I hear that wrong? I've been yeah. Well, um, well, he says that, but all they saw was footage on of a girl near the church. But law enforcement says that's not her. So I mean, that was just pure luck that there happened to be somebody on there when he said, well, "Oh, I dropped her off near the show church." That I was watching that um, had her possibly had her body. Or had his vehicle near the school ground early, early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's somebody you just making stuff up for views. That? No, there's nothing that that's a, that doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah, there's no information. Law enforcement hasn't said anything like that. That might have been a theory they had, but yeah, that doesn't exist. Well, there's this other fellow that I watched that said that uh, he possibly went back. Okay, to possibly. Yeah. the school somewhere near the school and picked up the body and brought the bad body back to the condo. <laughs> well, that just sounds ridiculous to me, but uh, what, what the way, the reason the body was found was because there was a, a flat tire. Apparently he was fixing a flat tire right on the street where her body was eventually found. And then somebody saw the car there and then reported it. Right. Well, that's yeah. where he had taken her to after. Yeah, I know the, that. I know that. Eight nine o'clock period. I'm talking about way before that. Well, you know, well, yeah, you, you don't know. Uh, well, all we know is it was eight nineteen. She was seen dead in the vehicle, so it could have been, you know, at eight forty or so. Well, it's a twenty mile drive, so it probably would have taken. But it might have been 
eight forty five, nine o'clock before he could have dumped your right, body. Right, there's there. a lot of stories of him running up and down that road well before about eight o'clock, where he was uh, possibly had done dropped that girl off at somewhere near that school, and then gone back to pick her up, and that's where the police say that they that he. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Moved a body or whatever. I mean, it's possible. And yeah, somebody somewhere in the woods the near condo. the condo could be like in the woods near the school. A body. He put the body there first, and then he maybe at uh, like it's. It could have even have been on his way out. So like at seven thirty-five, he gets to the school probably at seven forty-five area, puts her body somewhere. But it, it seems like it would have been earlier than that. I'm just not sure why he threw the stuff in his own apartment complex as garbage. It's just it's so stupid. Oh, no, that's ignorant. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad. You know, I'm ignorant. glad these I people mean, are stupid. But it... Look, I, I've dumped off a lot of uh, raccoons and uh, possums and stuff, and I don't dump them off in my own trash can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to bring it to an uh, apartment complex with one of those big dumpsters, right? Or uh, yeah, McDonald's exactly. or something that has a big dumpster outside the back. Yeah. No, I mean that's the first place they're gonna look. They're they're gonna look for the body there. Yeah, they probably said they probably check surveillance footage right outside the apartment, and they followed the car and they go, oh, whoa, he stopped right here. Look at he's throwing the back. Oh, let's check that. Let's check that dumpster. Oh crap! Look at that. He put the. You know, it's just so stupid. God. Well, sure. When they're the first place they're gonna start searching is the the, the house. Yeah the house and then they're going to start moving a parameter around mm-hmm. there and they're going to start looking in the backyard the front yard the trees the mm-hmm. and then they're going to move they're not going to overlook a dumpster right they're not going to overlook a ditch um you know anything a culvert anything within a mile they're going to comb the place this guy was an ignorant idiot i i, I mean evil ignorant idiot mm-hmm. yeah well hopefully we get a better buttoned up timeline at some point we need like a probable yeah, cause so. document for I murder so. I'm, I'm waiting yeah is, is the mom does, the, is, does it look like the mom's in trouble do you think well it's there's more weight in her favor for sure now it's just even there's an article out there it sounds like the police say her timeline doesn't add up and once the police are throwing out something right. like that then her you know, and the, her it, and her at, it doesn't at necessarily mean though that she's involved though it just means that it doesn't add up to the story that was told which could just mean that she's told stories because she was told the story to tell and then over time you're just not remembering the story because if you're the one that does it you don't there's the facts don't change when it's yourself. It's easy to remember things, but when you're telling a story, yeah. it's hard to keep everything straight. So it could be something like that. And I just wonder how scrambled she is. I mean, if she is if she is purely innocent and she's just pure scrambled, it's going to be difficult for her to get all her facts together to begin with. Yeah. You That's know. true. Yeah, she seems a little off. Right, a little off mentally, it seems like. Well, <clears throat> I maybe I don't know about that. I haven't been convinced on that yet. But I'm just saying. I mean, this this is tragic. And if she's purely not involved, and this is just overwhelming, mm-hmm. she just can't think straight to begin with. Yeah. Well, I think she. You know. I mean, the, the guy that I was talking to today. It sounds like she's on a lot of medications for various. Uh, you know issues like that like she doesn't yeah, um, you know so we'll see see how what it all turns out to be but all uh, right let's let's see how it unfolds that's all, right, all i got well thanks for calling in appreciate it bye bye all right ding 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 i'm turning it off now Ah, there we go. Got off, turned off Skype. Thank you. Now, let's take a look at that article now. Should have done that earlier, but I took calls and it never ended. Come on. 
Oh, that's not going to play. Hold on. No, no, no. There we go. Finally. I need some little background music. So this is the article, one of the articles out there that made everybody go, Wow, what's going on? Madeline Soto's story, Jennifer Soto gave law enforcement, doesn't line up with what investigators know. Channel 9 learned Tuesday that the story, Jennifer Soto, the mother of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, gave the law enforcement, does not line up with, investigator, what, with what investigators know. Thanks, Sirius Black. On February 27th, a day after her daughter had been reported missing, Soto told Channel 9 that her boyfriend, Stephen Stearns, who is now the prime suspect in Madeline Soto's death, has taken the girl, had taken the girl to school. She said the last conversation she had with her daughter happened the night before her disappearance. But a report Channel 9 obtained Tuesday shows that Soto told deputies that she saw her daughter the morning of the girl's disappearance, right? Remember that part where I told you, look at the pause there. Uh, yeah, I said goodnight, and um, yeah, yeah, just like that, yeah. And then she went missing. Yeah, no, no, that's not how it went. No one has been charged in Madeline Soto's death, but investigators are looking into who knew what when. That means they are reviewing initial interviews of the couple and ones conducted uh, later on. Sources told Channel 9, Shannon Butler, that the statements about the timeline of Madeline Soto's disappearance have not always been consistent. Jennifer Soto told Channel 9 last week that the last conversation she had with her daughter was about thir her 13th birthday party uh, the night before her disappearance. I told her good night, and yeah, that was it, she said. And by the way, thank you to, uh, I want to say thank you to Michelle. I won't say the real, her other name, because then it'll be, I, I didn't realize that she put that one in there. Uh, uh, I won't say the, her YouTube name, so you can't combine them. All right. Huh? All right, let me look at this thing here. Somebody sent me something. Newly obtained documents show that the girl's mother told deputies on February 26th that she saw her daughter getting dressed for school at 8 a.m. and Stearns then took her to school. But since the initial report was taken, Channel 9 learned from Orange County Sheriff John Mina that Madeline Soda was likely dead earlier than that. Right. See, that's the thing. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near the school, Mina said during a news conference. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stephen Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours of that day. So there it is, moved. So that means it was moved from some place. Channel 9 has reviewed statements from Stearns and Jennifer Soto to try to piece together what happened in the final hours of Madeline Soto's life. We dropped her off at school, close to school, Jennifer Soto told Channel 9. She wanted to walk the rest of the way. See, that's a really specific story. Like, hey, yeah, uh, uh, dropped her off near the school. She wanted to walk the rest of the way. But none of that's true. So that means the story that, that Jen is telling is not true. Uh, it's where did she get the story from, though? The Kismi police will not officially comment. An initial report also shows that Stern told investigators that after Madeline Soto got out of the car, she stopped to look in her backpack before, oh yeah, yeah, before 
Uh, he drove away. That backpack was discovered in a dumpster. Right. At their apartment, though, I think. Cern said he went home for about an hour after going to a vape store and then ran errands and was home until 2.30. But anyways, let's see. What's that thing I just got? Take a look at it. It says, work grandmother emotional as well. She's a little girl with many, wait, what did she say? This grandma, I guess, grandma. She's a little girl with so many fears, so she doesn't sleep alone. And I don't think she can leave or run away from home. I guess this is before they found her. The secretary added that they were celebrating. I don't know, it doesn't really add much so anyways you guys I think that's gonna do it for me tonight thank you guys for being here what a long lull that was <laughs> two hours but thank you guys for the at the beginning to we had Cali gal 3 Kylie Timothy Cecil B killer is a new member and then mag Cindy Leon Cheryl Bullock Vibes of Today, Alley Cake, Connie My One Flipping Life, Sophie H, and then Lillian a couple times on PayPal, and Nancy, thank you, and the dogs, don't forget the dogs and the cats, uh, Sophie H, Rhonda Brand, Callie Gal 3, uh, Melanie a new member, Pancakes, Holly Miranda, Lanky Tor with a cat eye, Billy Barker, Far Q, <laughs> gifted a membership, then a super chat, then Faye, then LM, Mama She 13, LM, K Me's 14 months, K Me, then Arlene Nolte, then Tania Animus 17 months as a freak, Lee RD, then we've got Candle Woodward Stone. Then 1111 True Crime, Maury A, Zozo, Katja T, Georgina Stolicker, then Pixie Blue, Ginger's Keys, Katja T, Robin, um, Ann Pulley, new member, Hawk, K, Hawk Fan, Robin, then I gifted five memberships, then K Me. Lanky Tor gifted five memberships. Osiris Stewart and Mag with a cat eye. Then George Leonard. Mama 457 Rose. And it's funny because these are all like at 7.30. <laughs> like we're all, that's, that's funny. Look, I'll, I'll tell you this, how it worked. So then I was member two months. And then Christine Hawkins gifted five memberships. Major Mom. And then that was at 7.57. Then from then we had uh, Fark Q at 8.12. LM 8.18. Allison Cosgrove and April Rain became a new member. Then Robin, Kathy Shiflet, Sirius Black, and Rad Story right at the end there. So thank you, Rad Story, to end the show. Don't know, DC. I was wondering the same thing, if that's what he was doing on that for something in the morning did he record something and put it out there but anyways thank you guys very much i'm a little bit sleepy myself been pretty busy lately hopefully i can get that other interview out tomorrow but i don't know man i'm just beat so thank you guys very much for being here tonight and doing all the calling in and you know contributing supporting the channel Yeah, no problem, chicken wing. But uh, and also thanks to everybody for who you know sends me information. Zozo's always getting me hooked up with stuff. A lot of you guys send me emails. And 
So thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for being here tonight. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Hey, look at that. It's a trigger bunny. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing. Oh, look for at quite that. It's the bunny now. dancing with Lori. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a. How do I turn down Crime dissector. Flag rejecter. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector. Freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector. Interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pet. With all respect, y'all Just remember I've a temple fucking check ya. I have no agenda I'm no pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work Alright, everybody, talk to you later Good night, everybody Jay Oh, boy There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dadgum swamp.